is very tired, so you want it very, yes, you need some support over here. If I talk like that, oh, great, did we start? Perfect. So, hello and welcome. Sorry that I was giving some tips before we start the pitching to all the participants. So, we are here and the big moment has arrived. It's time for the pitch. Tere tulemast meie ETH 2023 lõppu lihtikõnade kuulamisele ja see on tõeliselt väga, väga pingeline hetk. Me oleme seda nii kaua oodanud. Yes, so welcome to the EdTech Hack Estonia 2023 and let me introduce you how the event will take place and how the process will take place. So the teams, each team will have strictly three minutes to pitch and three minutes for Q&A. As you can see, we have changed also the, the screens here so the jury can see uh, also how much time do you have to ask your questions. And... Um, the, what, what, how you're going to be evaluated, the criteria is how relevant is your solution to the challenge, the quality of your solution, how original it is, how feasible, how sustainable, transferable, but also your team, the characteristics of the team and the, how strong your team is. Ja siia Aita Rita on kogunenud väga mitmekülne süri esindades siis nii poliitika kujundajaid, eeteh inimesi, õpetajaid, teadlasi ja ka organisatsioone ja nemad hindavad siis teie lihtikõne lähtuvalt sellest, kas ta on originaalne, kas ta on teostatav, kas ta on jätkusuutlik, kas ta on ülekantav, kas ta on siis ajakohane eeteh Hackathonile ja milline on team. Thank you, Janika. And without further ado, I think we have to introduce who is in the panel today, uh, our respective uh, jury. So give a big applause for the hard work that they're going to do beforehand, please. Big applause to our jury for being Suur here. Applause. Thank you very much. And maybe we can take one minute to introduce each and every member, your name, what organization you represent and what kind of solutions are you looking for today? Um, uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Anlind Lieberg and I uh, represent uh, Integration Foundation. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lee Hube and I'm representing uh, Ülemiste City, one of a kind smart city in all Baltic countries. Hello, everybody. My name is Omari. I'm co-founder and CEO of Practical. Thank you. Hi, my name is Annette Marie, and I'm here representing Lion Program. Hi, my name is Annika, and I'm from Noret Kooli, or Teach for Estonia. Thank you. Arvid Avast, the Institute for the Estonian Language. Urma Seinaste STEM teacher at Tartu Tamme School. Uh, my name is Mert Tarva and I am representing EdTech Estonia and uh, Dream Apply. Thank you all very much and we're looking forward to hear your questions. I think that's uh, the right people in the right place to, to see these ideas and to evaluate these ideas. And we will start as we have a hybrid event. We have to teams worked online and teams working in person. We will start with the online teams firstly. So we're going to see their pre-recorded pitch of three minutes and then the teams will come on Zoom and you will be able to ask questions and uh, hopefully we can hear them, <laughs> their answers as well from technical aspect. Yeah. Et me oleme kohe kohe alustamas meie lihtikõnadega, kuna on tegemist hakatoniga, kus on nii online meeskonnad kui ka kohapealsed meeskonnad, siis me alustame online meeskondadega, kõigepealt vaatame nende ette salvestatud kolme minutilist lihtikõned ja see järel tiimi juht on otse telesilas süriiga. Ja enne veel, kui me alustame, kaks numbrit, et meie häkatoni kõige nooremad osalejad on kümne aastased ja kõige vanem kaasa lööja on 78 
Okay, great. My weak point is the numbers, but I'll get that. <laughs> 10 and 78. Thanks, thank, thanks for the hint. So if we can add some numbers related to the age of our participants this year, the youngest is 10 years old, and the oldest is 78 years old. So we have all the spectrum from the very, very young to the very, very old. <laughs> old, I don't know. The more that they move to 78, it doesn't feel like getting old, but anyway. So are we, Alustama. Alustama, sis. are we ready to have the first speech? And the first theme is RSC, Social Robot Study Companion for Students. Big applause for the first team. Hello, I'm Mateusz, and I'm presenting on behalf of our RSC dev team, our open source robot study, uh, study companion. Modern education has moved online, and students are often isolated and disengaged, and it's hard to look at a flat screen and relate to what's being shown. We need more engaging solutions, something that engages the mirror neurons and not just being passive, more active. But tutors can be expensive, and few can afford one. Hence, we saw the need for on-demand, affordable, and reliable academic support, motivation, and engagement. Our unique approach is to provide students with a kit so they can build their own study buddy robot. This is an open source platform built just for students. It's a supportive companion that understands how you feel and helps you stay on top of your studies. It's a tutor that analyzes your performance and communicates with you using speech, text, and uh, visual and motion gestures. But it's also customizable and can be used in other settings down the road. It's our vision for the future of digital education. This is our roadmap. Since 2020, we've been developing this research-packed prototype. And by next year, we hope to offer this kit online. We've indeed been hard at work studying how to deliver a great study buddy. We compiled our solution canvas for this hackathon and our target group are students, lecturers, and staff looking to improve academic success, families wanting to support their kids' education holistically, and persons that are studying and need motivational support. In terms of sustainability, we emphasize this as an open source and low cost solution. Much of our R&D is community driven. And finally, the RSC could see use cases in a variety of other industries as a uniquely privacy aware solution, such as in therapy or clerical support. The main value is that students get to personalize their experience. They get to stay on track with studies and get motivational support. It's also cost effective, compact and portable, and also cute and accommodates a diverse range of learning setups, but we need financial support to make more of them, to validate them better, and get more support in terms of R&D and production in general. But this is our team. We've spent many years working together and have experience with special education, robots, and AI research. We also are experienced team managers and project managers, and we're working to improve and test our educational solutions and need your continuous support. So please connect and we look forward to you joining our community. Thank you. Hello. Hey, wish to hear the audience as well if you have any questions. Yeah. So thank you very much for the pitch. I think it's time for We can hear you very well, so it works great. So whoever has question, please go ahead. Uh, have you calculated what is the global market opportunity for this kind of a product? We, we had estimates, but no concrete numbers. Currently, the market is still grassroots. Our main competitor is a newly launched robot called Moxie, and their MSRP is already revolutionary at about 1,000. But comparable social robots would include Pepper and Now, each retailing as used on the market above 7,000 MSRP. So, uh, our current market value is, uh, it's difficult to put it to figures. We couldn't find a concrete number, so we couldn't reference it. But we're estimating about maybe half a billion right now. In terms of social robots on the markets. But the interesting thing is that we haven't found a niche that really fills this gap to our students and mm -hmm. providing education. Hi. If I understand correctly, you have a DIY element, so the student builds their own robot. 
on the sustainability side, how easy it is to repair the robot and how sturdy it is? Uh, this employs snap fit construction and modular design, and all the panel components are 3D printed, and all the other components are off the shelf and affordable. And we paid attention to select only the parts that are readily available across uh, all the markets where we try to focus, which includes Europe, Asia, South America, and Oceania. Uh, in general, if something breaks, it should be the it should be a seamless process of you just uh, swap in, or getting a swap in replacement. If a panel breaks, you just reprint it, provided you have access to a buddy that has a printer. Okay. So as you see, it's snap with construction. We kept it simple. And in general, it's supposed to be easy to work with. And this is our current pro prototype. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. I just need some help with you because I don't see the clock. Ah, now I see the clock. Okay, so you ah. can go for one more question. Okay, maybe. Sure. Uh, a follow-up, if we may, or anyone else? <laughs> um, uh, oh, now I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a sec. Uh, if anyone else can. Um, uh, what, uh, for why a physical robot, not just a chatbot? This question was answered by Moxie when we came across it a few weeks ago. When you study online, you are presented with a flat or perhaps slightly curved 2D display. You're only engaged in terms of your mirror neurons, not very well. Um, in terms of that, basically, you're just reading. You're just uh, listening. You're maybe writing something. But it's not that spontaneous kickback of, uh, oh, you're talking to someone or you're exchanging thoughts, advice, ideas, and so forth. It's not a spontaneous, natural occasion. And when you interact with someone, when you have an immersive aspect to it, it, it grants you that additional sense of how you fit it in uh, into society. And it helps you build not just the hard skill, but also the soft skill. Uh, I have to stop you here <laughs> because your time has uh, has passed. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much for the the first questions, and I hope to hear again more about RSC. So a big applause for the first team that kicked off our today's event. Thank you. And then we can move to the second online team who is pitching today, Echo Spark. Applause. <laughs> thank you. We are Catalina, Alexandra, and Diana. And we work on EcoSparks. EcoSparks is a digital template for problem-based learning on e-waste and digital waste. What did we use for our prototype? Uh, two no-code tools. We connected uh, Airtable, which is like Google Sheets, to Softer, which is a web app. Our challenge? make learning about sustainability engaging and fun. Why a template? Well, because templates are easy to use and update. They ease our workload. They make us feel less stressed. They provide consistency. They increase efficiency and they help the audience to focus. Why a digital template? While 90% of future jobs will require digital skills, almost half of your opinion lack even the most basic digital skills. Why a digital template for problem-based learning? Studies have shown that problem-based learning significantly improves learning outcomes and positively contributes to academic achievement. Why problem-based learning for e-waste and digital waste? Well, to this question, we might already know the answer. We have 50 million metric tons of e-waste annually, and that equals to roughly seven kilograms of e-waste per capita. Only 20% of this is recycled. Speaking of digital waste, something that not many are familiar with, 3 to 5% of the global emissions come from digital activities. And this is more than the emissions from air traffic. And the figure is expected to double by 2025. Our target, educators. Educators who are passionate about sustainability education, who want to give their students the spotlight to be proud of their ideas. They want to allow the students to reflect on the projects by also seeing what peers have submitted. And they want to allow them to build 
uh, on the research from previous years. Our prototype means duplicating a template and the template has a recommended structure that the, any educator can adjust, has resources that students can check to understand the team better, also adjustable. The template has tools that students can use for their project. At the end, students fill in a form with details about their projects and those are displayed dynamically on a web page. Who else could use it? Hackathons. If you want to make all the solutions transparent, you can have them all uploaded on a website and visible to everybody participating in the web workshop in the hackathon and outside. Also, NGOs who want to build a network to share examples of good practices. EcoSparks is live and ready to be used. Test it out. Thank you. One more note, I am a volunteer in a squad on sustainability in education under the European Digital Thank Education Hub. Thank you very much, team, and let's and, move to the question. Um, as part of this so, uh, there was something there that was interesting, like the link to the project was at the end of the video. Okay. Uh, can we have the mic on, if it's possible? Okay, the red what one. Is what is the main advantage to compare the similar solutions? What is your main advantage or differentiation? Um, so at this point, I'm not aware of uh, so other solutions that tackle this in the same way, in the sense that, um, so what we did, we connected two no-code tools, um, Airtable and um, software, and at uh, this point, at a class level, you don't need any money to implement or to use it. You just, um, you need an account with those two tools and then you're able to use it. So I guess that's a, a big difference in comparison to another platform that might implement a feature like this, but then uh, you would need to be a user of that platform. I hope Ka that answered the question. Thank you. Uh, kind of a follow-up question. So, are you content builders or platform builders? Uh, we are educators. We are, at this point, neither. We, um, we were confronted with the uh, problem that when teaching, we have to um, reconstruct um, our, um, let's say, tool every time we use project-based learning or problem-based learning. And this tool would help us give more uh, transparency to uh, what students are doing in the class and also to keep all the resources uh, like videos, articles, podcasts, anything that students use to understand the team, to keep them grouped. So you are saying that no, there is no such existing platform that can house the content you have? Uh, not in this way. For example, I know you can upload files on Padlet, but they cannot be visible uh, in the chat, uh, in Zoom. There is a link now, and I invite all of you to uh, use that link uh, to try the prototype. You go to add projects, and you can add projects there, and they will be visible on the website on the homepage. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Team EchoSpark. So please give them a big applause. <laughs> and then we can move to the next team that is pitching online today, after a thousand. Big applause for them as well. A little bit of exercise and moving, right? <laughs> uh, let the video start. Hello. Hello, my name is Robert Nylans, and I am the team leader for After a Thousand, and we have developed the set of apps that includes what we call Unit Circle Rummy. And the best way I would describe that is, imagine that in a math class, a math teacher is working with the students on the concept of filling in this circle with all of the significant values, the coordinate pairs, and degrees, and radians. And while this could be done easily on paper, imagine if you had an app that would allow you to do something like this where interactively the students would 
fill in the values along the circle, and you could do this as a class together, or you could see them doing this on their devices. This is what we have come up with, and it's a completed app that's available right now for students to use in their classrooms. Not only that, you also have the option of using what we call angle connections. This is a geometry concept where students work with angles along parallel lines. Those activities are major concepts in pre-calculus and trigonometry and geometry. So this would be something that students could use in their classrooms, teachers could display it for them, and they'd be able to work interactively. Many of these concepts are not addressed specifically in some of the math applications that are available now. So this would give teachers for upper level math classes in secondary education an opportunity to bring these concepts to their students. This is something that we see as a major advantage for schools around the world to be able to provide. We've seen an increase in student engagement and achievement when we've used this app in our classroom. The other piece that I would mention is we also have a program that would allow students in class to factor trinomials, so you would also have the availability for an algebra concept. All three of these apps are available through purchase of license keys that are available basically in a turnkey system where teachers would get the keys and they would make them available to their students and the learning could start. Teachers could use this in a presentation format or small group format or individually. You could even use the apps to do assessments as the lesson is going or at the conclusion. If you have questions, I would be glad to answer those. Thank you. Uh, Hello. Yeah, hi. Uh, just wanted to ask, uh, maybe you can elaborate a little bit, uh, what have you been developing uh, in addition during the hackathon? Thanks. So mainly I've been meeting with people and getting their feedback on possible features that could be added um, to what we have available now. And then that will let me follow up with the rest of my team as well as other developers to see how easily we could add some of these features that people have mentioned would be good things to include. Any other questions? Yep. Who is in your team besides you? Um, so I have a student who is using the apps and giving me feedback, and I have a technical advisor who is a student at University of Illinois in the United States and has um, computer expertise and is pursuing a mathematics degree now. And he's also actively giving me, <clears throat> excuse me, feedback and technical advice for things that could be done. Hi. Um, this is already a repeated question and going to be repeated a lot today, I think. Why not existing platforms for content? Why, and uh, why are you creating your own solution? So what's, what needs fixing on the technical side that doesn't exist? Well, at least in the United States, a lot of the apps that are available are for the younger grades. And I needed something for what I was teaching. And while there would be things that would be similar to this that would already exist, this is a chance to bring everything under one umbrella, the three different apps at different uh, mathematical levels. So all under one umbrella for a single license key. The teacher would be able to access all of those or refer them to other teachers in their department or in their school. So this would be a single website, a turnkey situation where they'd be able to simply start once the students have their license keys, they wouldn't need to build anything with a tile program or a quiz program. All of those things are existing, all of them good, but this would save them a bunch of time because they would have everything available, just waiting for the students to access and to begin using in a classroom format. Great. Great, thank you. 
Thank you very much, team, after a thousand. Big applause for their pitch. And then we're moving to our next pitch uh, from the online teams as well, Ikra. Big applause and please let's start listening to their pitch. Hi, I'm founder of Ikra. Today I will give you some brief introduction about Ikra. The problem we are trying to solve is uh, endless destruction in education system right now. Destruction from social media, no parallel engaging and gamifying alternative. An affordable ERP with integrated learning is missing. Parents are very busy. They need a smooth communication and monitoring channel with institute and their kids. A profile follow features in the learning ecosystem. The solution ECRA is a digital learning ecosystem which combines digital learning through MCQ quizzes and uh, gamification, a SAS ERP for academic institute and chatbot to create a real-time automated communication channel with institute students and parents. So this is the ECRA mobile app inspired by the format of TikTok, content creator will create multiple choice quizzes of various topics instead of video. It will gamify and make the learning engaging. There will be profile follow features like Instagram, which will motivate quality content creation. This is the ICRA ERP uh, to manage academic institute like preschool, school, college, university, and even coaching center. So why ICRA? Interactive quiz content for engaging learning, learning on the go. For content creator, there will be instant reward, profile follow motivation, and emphasize text and picture first content will attract more academic content creator to join our platform. For institute, ERP with enrollment, accounting, exam scheduling, scoring, mark sheet and attendance and all relevant features will be available as a software as a service. For parents, there will be instant notification, automated reminder for upcoming assignment, project deadlines and payments. There are two business models, uh, software as a service and digital content uh, ICRA can earn from these two channels. Competitor, there are lots of quiz app, chatbot app, ERP for institutes, uh, but combining everything in one single platform uh, and create a greater ecosystem will be unique. Sustainability, uh, we reduce the uses of paper, paperless student evaluation and no new hardware inclusion in our system. This is my team, I am a serial technical entrepreneur. Uh, this is our uh, milestones. Uh, we are planning to release our MPB at the end of December. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. This is my LinkedIn QR code. So please feel free to get connect with us. We are uh, looking for market access, uh, network partner, and also funding. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Thank you very much, Abul, and it's time for questions. Uh, hey, uh, same question as before. Uh, what have you developed during the hackathon? Thanks. So we are actually uh, trying to make a um, large ecosystem for education system. So there will be a content creator, content creation system. There will be ERP system, also chat. So our system actually we are all, um, uh, in the progress of development, uh, and we can uh, nearly 50 to 60 percent of work has been already done. Hi, you're yeah. tackling about a thousand different things with your application. Uh, yeah. Why focus or why spread the focus on uh, all of them, on all of the different things? You're building on ERP and the quiz app all together. So why not just focus on one and do it well? And, or, and why focus on so many things? Okay, we are uh, trying to create a um, uh, strategic advantage through a greater vision so that an ERP system, there will be teachers communicating with the student and the, from the quiz app, there will be quiz and earning from, monetizing and earning from them. 
So if any institute is only using the ERP and teacher can actually get some motivation to join the quiz platform and, um, and earning and uh, creating quality content. The same actually goes if anybody is coming in our platform as a content creator, he can feel that with an integrated ERP, we can also use it and use it uh, in our institute and manage our administration, administration system with this ERP system. So actually, it will actually boost our um, growth and it will give us some strategic advantage in this competitive era because we know there are lots of chat app, quiz app, and a lot of free open source ERP solution available. But our main selling point, combining everything in a single umbrella and make a, make a greater ecosystem for a, a specifically in education domain. Thank you. Thank you very much for the questions. Thank you very much, uh, Team Ikra and Abul, for the presentation. Big applause. Thank you, thank you. And now we're moving to our last team that will pitch online. Uh, that will be Edmap. The stage is yours. So, yeah. During my university years, every time I tried to enter the job market, I failed. I failed with the same reason. Sorry, but you don't have the industry experience. At that time, I thought, well, you are not smart enough. But then communicating with many people, I found out that there is a big problem. Many learners struggle to enter the job market because of the exact same reason. Lack of industry experience and undeveloped soft skills. They fail in a closed loop between education and career where a question arises. Well, where is the place that the learner can gain the industry experience and enter the job market more easily? To answer this question, let me introduce you Edmap. Edmap is a learning ecosystem that aims to bridge the gap between education and career success. It will help the learner to gain industry experience and develop soft skills in a stress-free environment. Our product consists of two parts, but we are currently concentrating only simulating IT workspaces and how the magic works. Your learning experience at Edmap will make you feel working in a simulated IT company with real people as a remote team. And as a team, you are going to complete real IT projects by using industry-specific tools. And here, are, here is the place where you are going to understand how the company works and how you can apply your knowledge and complete real projects. Our product is ideal for two groups, people who need industry experience to enter job market and people who are already in IT, junior professionals who want to upskill or reskill to IT. The market we're aiming to enter is really promising. It's supposed to reach to $140 billion by 2027. Here are the competitor landscape of Edmap, but compared to all our competitors, we are suggest to our user combine simulated workspace and learning framework. We are going to work with a project-based subscription model. All account holders will have free access to trial simulation. After completing free trial simulation, they are going to pay for a full simulation. After completing level one, the product will challenge them to go for level two, level three, etc. So far, we have secured thirty thousand dollars investment, and here are the uh, features we are going to implement next year. Here's the team of Edmap. All of us are very passionate about education and we have the problem we pitched you today. And that's the reason we gather together to solve the problem for the upcoming generations. We have a background in uh, technology, business development, product design, and I am a person of, I'm a product person. Thank you very much. Hope to see you in Edmap. If you are interested, please follow us on LinkedIn. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer. Thank you very much, Edmap, and time for questions. Hi, Edmap. So you're building a simulation of a workspace. Uh, did I understand correctly that the exercises or the activities they're doing in the simulated space, they are real life projects. So they're solving actual projects. Yes, uh, exactly. We are going to collect all the cases, all the problems that there are in the in industry. And based on these cases and problems, we are going to simulate the workspace. And the learner will come to our 
assimilation and solve a problem that exists in the industry. So they will understand how they are going to apply their knowledge and what problems they are going to solve in the industry. Okay, can you explain a bit more further what the simulation means uh, and a few specific questions. Are there actual other people in the teams or are they also simulated? Uh, yep, uh, the team members are real. For example, I'm a developer. There is a UX designer and a project manager. We are applying to Edmap. Uh, the Edmap uh, do a need assessment for us. And if our needs is the same, we're going to be in the same team. We're going to form a remote team and we receive our project. And the project manager, the learner project manager is going to manage the team and the project. So we will have to have like a milestones uh, and in the end, for example, uh, in f after four weeks, we are going to deliver the project. So in the end, there's going to be also a, a stakeholder. So the project manager is going to hand over to it. But during this project, uh, during this simulation, we are going to uh, have all the problems that there are in the industry. For example, a conflict between a project manager and stakeholder. Uh, so the stakeholder is a problematic one. How the project manager is going to handle this kind of situation? Uh, and this kind of scenarios. Have you already completed any simulations? Uh, we have our MVP in an operational model uh, only. We don't have the product, but yes, we have a, a Scrum team simulation uh, conducted with Armenian students uh, with six people. So we have a team who completed the simulation for two months and like eight sprints, if I'm not mistaken. And also asking uh, already classic question of uh, what did you manage to do during the hackathon? Yep, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, during the hackathon, we understood that the problems and the experience between, for example, Armenia, Estonia and other European countries are different. And this hackathon was a great opportunity to communicate with uh, professionals uh, from Europe to understand how they experience. So we're going to have a solution that covers all the uh, problems or we're going to localize, for example, to create a simulation for Estonian market, for European market and Armenian. And currently, after some user interviews, we have the user flow of the product in a, a like high level, so we know uh, how user will navigate in our product. Great. Thank you very much, Ed, uh, Edmap Thank team and uh, Edmar for answering the questions. Big applause for Edmap, please. <laughs> And uh, I would like to thank all the teams who have worked online and be with us in this uh, format. I would love to hear you also in person these days, but thank you for sticking around with us. And just also Pirat uh, and uh, Matis that have facilitated the online hackathon as well, the online part to make sure that we are all here and we're all present. So big applause for the team, but also uh, working teams, but also their administration teams. Thank you. <laughs> And now let's start the fun begin, as I say, in physical space, so we can see people are coming here and pitching. Uh, just some information about the technical stuff. I have two clickers with me, and things will go smoothly, but just if you don't see the slides in the screen that the clock is, don't panic if you see other slides. We are going to see the right presentation. Uh, you have three minutes strict. Uh, I will just let you maybe a few seconds to finish your sentence, but please don't take advantage of me in that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, be mindful of the time as much as possible because you all have great insights, you all have great ideas, but you all have also opportunities. Uh, remember to hold your chin. It feels tired, right? Uh, so we can hear you. And we can start with the first team, which is Coit. Please welcome to the stage. <laughs> So you have left pocket of nine with the slides. This is for what? For, for your slides, yes. Yeah, but this is yes. more important. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kevin, and I'm the co-founder of Coit. So, as you can probably see, I'm a pretty young guy. So, the matter of fact is, I started high school just three years ago. And in that high school, we had a mandatory programming course. 
Uh, well, I was in the IT industry for all, almost 10 years by that point, doing Olympiads, everything like that. But that's not normal. That's where my good friend Matthias comes in. He was my classmate, and he was a smart guy. He knew that the IT industry is interesting, there's good money in it, and the offices are looking good. But when Matthias was given the first taste in IT in school, he was disappointed in it, because the platform was terrible, the curriculum was inefficient, and he lost interest in IT. But Matthias is not alone. We have a problem with university dropouts in IT, which then also leads to the fact that we are in dire need of IT specialists in the workplace. In Estonia alone, 2,600 IT specialists every year. That's why I created Coit, to help students like Matthias. Coit is the programming language, programming learning platform that takes you from your very first line of code in class up until getting your very first internship. We start our curriculum with a basic course that you complete in class on our platform. Uh, we use engaging materials to make the students interested in our platform. For example, when we teach for loops, which are a concept where you can uh, repeat a single line of code many times. We use the sim uh, example of Bart Simpson, where he has to write on a chalkboard many times a naughty thing he did. So we use for loops to illustrate the example that you can do it in just two lines of code. Uh, we currently have our first working prototype, which is up since May. In that time, we have over 100 signed up users who have tested our site. We have over 2,000 submissions of code done for our tasks. And we have 10 teachers interested in trying our platform. Uh, on, in this hackathon, we worked on our pro uh, business side mostly and our business and revenue models. Uh, to all this to make uh, the goal of 100 schools in 2025 possible. For that, we need to develop. We need to develop our portfolio creation and specialization courses where the student can pick a specific topic that they like. Uh, to do that, we need $300,000 in three years uh, to build two products, one for the school and one for the IT companies who will be facilitating the internships. We are six highly motivated uh, high school students uh, or freshly graduated high school students who want to make a difference in programming education. So join us for a new dawn in programming education. I am Kevin and this was Coit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Team Coit. And let's move to the questions part, Q&A. Hi, Coit. Nice to see you again. So. Uh, Business-wise, uh, what are the products you're selling now? You said you had a product for schools and a product for the IT firms, but I didn't really catch what, what are you selling them. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Uh, our first curriculum starts in the classroom because we believe that learning with the teacher in the beginning phase is the best way to learn. So we're selling a platform for schools and teachers to manage their programming courses efficiently. After that, the student will then go on to learn individually a field in IT that they love and they take an interest in. Uh, when completing enough projects and enough courses, uh, we can help with the integration into an internship position with our partner IT companies, if that answers your question. Thank you. So, did I understand it correctly that you have the content and then you have the exercises, and then they are yes. combined in a classroom. Yes. And for and the, pro, both programs. Uh, for the beginning part, yes, we want to create both the platform and the beginning courses because we are young and we know how young people want to learn. For the specialization courses, we are looking to collaborate with IT companies to better understand their needs, what they need in an intern, what sort of experiences, what sort of skills. So that will be in collaboration with the companies. So the uh, exercises and lessons are fully automated. There is no human feedback to answer it correctly. So currently our prototype is fully self-sufficient. You can go on our platform ko-it.ee and you can complete the first course completely on your own. Everything is automatic, automatically graded. Uh, in the future, in the near future, we are this, uh, this, uh, developing a teacher's sort of admin panel where he, he or she can better manage, better grades, 
uh, better create the uh, work and just make the overall teaching, uh, teaching process more efficient. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tim Coint, for your pitch. Make applause, please. Oh, I, you can leave them on the... I wish I had more hands. If you can solve that, that they can hold multiple ha things, that would be great. And I'll keep one of your, <laughs> one of your phrases that we know how we learn, we know how we want, how we learn, and what we want to be taught, and all of this. It's very important to remember the users of our solutions. Um, something also besides like holding your your chin with a mic or touching your chin. It's like, don't go over your slides. We want to have you in front of the cameras. We want the people to see you and also to shine with the amazing lights that uh, you're here. I'm shining and these are helping very much actually. So uh, let's move to the next team that will come and pitch on stage is AI tools for teachers in Estonia. Are you here? Oh, that's great, big applause. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Rego, and I am the team lead for the project AI Tools for Teachers in Estonia. As you can see, I am not so young. Actually, I have a confession to make. I am not a hacker. I am a regular school principal. So what am I doing here in a hackathon? I am here because I am worried about the situation where our children are being taught by teachers who are overwhelmingly AI illiterate. Because this means that they are not able to teach our children how to best use the new AI tools in order to achieve their educational goals. And this needs to change. Because AI literacy is the new literacy. And AI skills are just as, as important as reading or writing skills. Estonian teachers have many barriers why they have not started using AI tools in their work. And our team is working to lower two of those. The first barrier is a simple language barrier. So our AI tools are the first AI tools that are 100% in Estonian language, come in an uh, English, uh, Estonian interface, and are landed on a domain that is also in Estonian language. The second barrier that we are targeting is the blank space uh, syndrome barrier. It is really difficult for many teachers to start communicating with AI. Where should you start? What should you ask? It's just this blank box. So we developed an AI tool where the teacher does not have to write almost anything. It is an AI lesson plan generator. Uh, the teacher just chooses from the drop menu its class, from the other drop menu the subject, and the only thing the teacher has to write is the topic of the lesson. For instance, ninth grade, history class, and topic, the beginning of Second World War and the AI tool will generate the lesson plan for that teacher. This is just the beginning. We actually developed another AI tool during the hackathon. That was a, a tool that uh, gives advice to teachers what kind of homework to give to students so students will not uh, do that homework easily with the help of AI. And there are many other AI tools to be developed. Estonian teachers need to have all the help and support in this new and rapidly developing field. And we want to be part of that solution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe I can ask you to stand a little bit more here. You're perfect, so we can see you shining. And then we can move to the questions to the jury. Yeah. Do I understand correctly that you have trained an Estonian large language model? No, you are not on the right track. <laughs> we are just having the Estonian interface, and it is uh, connected uh, via API with the OpenAI large language model. So uh, the user will see just Estonian. And right from the beginning, uh, if you type in the domain name, uh, there is no need to put this chat.openai.com. That is a her terrible one. I actually made for my own teachers, tehisaru.com, that just directs to that to overcome that barrier. But yeah, uh, otherwise it is not a new large language model that we are developing. Okay. Um, quality assurance of the content that is being created. So uh, we know that the current level LLMs are 
like uh, a bit of magic, but they're actually a black box. So we cannot be assured what comes out of them. How do you assure that the quality of the lesson brand and creative content is educationally viable? Well, we have to emphasize in every step that the teacher is the one that stays in control. This is just another tool that is empowering them. Uh, and they have to make the decision whether it is useful for their work or not, what they will uh, take and what they will leave. Uh, why didn't you demonstrate your uh, solution uh, during your pitch at the moment? Uh, I'm sorry? Why didn't you demonstrate uh, what you built? Yes, that's a very good question. Again, it is running on a local host at the moment because <clears throat> uh, we uh, uh, maybe uh, overdid uh, pressure on our programmers. They both uh, fell ill. They are down with a fever of 39. So uh, we uh, finished the prototype to this uh, uh, phase that it is running on a local host, uh, but it is not uh, uh, up uh, on the web. And, uh, I'm not the best one to uh, explain technicalities, but I understood that they have to build sessions there. Because if everyone would start at the moment this, then maybe uh, the person who wants to get the fourth grade biology uh, lesson plan will actually get uh, uh, an answer that parallelly was uh, uh, taken by another person who wanted to get an eighth grade uh, uh, literature plan. So uh, that is a work in progress, yes. Great. Thank you very much, and I really, uh, um, I like your enthusiasm that you own the space and you go there to answer all the firing questions. That's great. Yes. Thank you very much for your pitch. Thank you. And then we can move to the next team. I can call on stage team Votek. Woo -hoo. So, um, hey Sharks, um, we're seeking an investment of... Uh, AdTouch right now is a domino effect problem. Sounds complicated. It's the complexity of financial allocation to education. It is what the problem is. I will explain. So, here you can see the total expenditure of our government on books is 10 million years per year. A lot, yeah. But... Are books exactly a type of education we want? I don't think so. But let's ask statistics. So, only 8% of students uh, participate in any side projects of uh, their school. And only 47% of students actually go somewhere upper education. And especially startups, it is very risky to make our startups right now, and there is why. Because only 10% of every startup's uh, success over five years. Because market research is very poor right now. Due to communication uh, failure between their clients, schools, and themselves. And here I'm back. And I'm with the solution. Uh, very simple. Voltec allows educational community make data driven decision. Let's take a look. First, you can just make any request. You can just share your idea or how you can improve your environment, your school, educational technologies, whatever. You can choose your audience where to receive the feedback and then gain the feedback, gain the voting, and how real your problem actually is you are trying to solve. And then there is accurate analysis of your request, idea, pitch deck, whatever, divided by the problem, solution, business, and history of receivements. But it's not actually about startups. It's about any decisions that can be made in educational community. And the benefits, resources, especially time, are efficiently allocated. Our business model is about nonprofit structure. We, based on the donation, volunteer contributions, fundraising campaigns, and that's all. We're just trying to find as much critical mass as possible.
So we also have MVP, so contact us physically to show us and make the brighter future of education in Estonia. Thank you. Thank you. I feel a bit powerless without my <laughs> with Mike at the moment. So I would like to give the space to the uh, jury to ask questions, and I would uh, recommend to hear also the voices that we haven't heard yet. What motivates the people providing the evaluations or feedback? It's uh, education sector. All people in education sector are interested in teaching someone <laughs> and providing feedback. So that's the main mission. And we're just trying to collect the data and make it transparent in the process of decision making. Yeah. Uh, do you see uh, this uh, issue or problem uh, more uh, uh, Estonian based or like uh, international level? Uh, can you see it spreading around the globe? We are here and in, in educational hackathon. Uh, we're in Estonia and we're solving problem right now and in this reality we're staying, we're solving the problem of local municipal schools. For, for that reasons, that's all. Of course we can make imaginations on how popular it is, how global it is, of course. But I mean, that's the real problem right now and that's the solution that the market needs, teachers, students and school management actually also. So, you're building a voting platform. Um, why a new platform of all the voting platforms we have in, here in Estonia? Um, you have voting platform for specific individuals or laws that's been created. Uh, but we are creating platform to create ideas, to accelerate ideas, develop them, to really resonate with community needs. So that is the main mission we are covering here. Any other questions? No, no. Okay. Thank you very much, then, for team for your uh, pitch. Congratulations. Let's make a deal, sharks. I, thank you. And I need the clicker if you have taken it or you have left it there. Okay. Cool. And then I can walk around the stage and then with multiple microphones and ask the next uh, next team to come on stage, please, Provikidi. Tulke, tulke. Hello, my name is Maria. I'm representing Provigivi. Uh, we are a team of teachers, researchers, uh, visionaries, and ed tech uh, enthusiasts. Uh, Provigivi, uh, basically, in a nutshell, uh, helps teachers implement project-based learning and provides the students the opportunity to participate in uh, societal problem solving. Why do we need to do that? Um, so our society needs uh, citizens who can problem solve, who can think critically, uh, act ethically, and make a difference. And uh, we know uh, from research that the best way to do that in schools is through student-centered pedagogies like project-based learning. However, there's a problem. Uh, at least initially, teachers find it hard because it takes more time and it takes a little more effort. So here comes Provigivi. We come and help the teacher. We offer an educational platform where they can find the support to start with these projects. They can find real life challenges that we have created with partners. For example, how to solve the mental health crisis. Uh, or how to create the circular economy. Very relevant for today's society. Uh, now, we already have something existing and we came to this hackathon in order to improve it. Uh, we have received the feedback from the teachers who have already participated in our program. And uh, 
we basically try to uh, make the resource and the platform better so that it is more user friendly and uh, and the challenges help uh, them go through the process of the learning basically uh, going forward we are going to still be improving it uh, also building our online community because teachers have said that it helps them hugely if they can interact with their peers and learn from other projects. And also uh, we are going to uh, further uh, build the feature of uploading or showcasing the projects that everyone is doing. And this is to uh, help them connect with others, also help the students to, to connect with others, learn from one another, and um, and basically, uh, we want to show that, uh, to the students and teachers that they can really make a difference. So this is Provigivi. Uh, we hope you can help us uh, take the next step to the next level. Uh, thank you for your time, and we are open to questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Where do you will find all these projects and, uh, and uh, companies or I don't know, who will offer you these projects? Okay, so, uh, so the pro vigivis are like the real life challenges, like the mental health problem, or etc. And for those, uh, we have already found some partners and continue to find more partners. So it's either, it either comes from somebody or we just know that this problem is very significant in the society and uh, it aligns with the uh, uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals or Estonian National Goals. So these problems and challenges come from basically what we have agreed as a society that is important. Okay, thank you. Where does the content come from and how can you ensure the quality of the content? The content uh, primarily comes from the participating teachers who come uh, into our community and with whom together we uh, create uh, this content. Uh, and already we have, uh, for example, uh, teachers who work in schools who are also master's students. Uh, who created some really, really good content uh, and did research on it, but uh, we still haven't had time to f visualize and put it on the platform, so we are really trying to now make an effort to get all that the, the teachers have already done on the platform. In your pitch, you didn't mention anything about money. Uh. Anything about money. So oh, yeah. how is your platform financially viable? How will it survive? Okay, so first of all, we are a not-for-profit. However, um, uh, the thing that we would like to try out and haven't yet <laughs> is uh, that uh, these uh, challenges or provigivis would have sponsors. Uh, for example, uh, we met, uh, actually, it, I think it was one of the mentors. Uh, there was a challenge about migration, and somebody from the Ministry of Culture said, oh, this is exactly what we want to do. Like, this is important for us. So, uh, so we are targeting the public sector, but also the private sector, who could use these uh, provigivis as a way of uh, supporting their corporate social responsibility. Uh, and showcasing how they are con like uh, supporting youth. And maybe one viable example I can already s show from public sector is that we are collaborating with Ministry of Interior Affairs uh, on a competition whereby they give stipends to the projects uh, through this competition. So we are hoping that this kind of monetary stipend or prizes um, and then visibility for the companies and other partners would help us financially. And also a teacher who participated in our program was here yesterday and said, hey, actually, I wouldn't Your mind is paying. <laughs> Thank you for taking my job. <laughs> I was just yeah. waiting to hear the, the last sentence. But yeah, so actually a teacher said that they don't mind uh, paying for something. So. We just have been not so bold <laughs> to ask for money, so we need to maybe try that. Thank you now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Provigivi. Thank you. Great. 
Thank you. And then we can move to the, oops, to the next team. But give me one second. <laughs> yes. Well, now we're going to hear a team and we're going to actually experience the youngest teacher in the room. So big, give a big applause and encouragement to my zone to come on stage. Hello everyone, my team's name is Maison and we make a wipe about after school activities. This is a agenda. My name is Isu. My name is Hei. I'm Eric. And the teacher gave teacher gave schools about the activities and school use the Gmail to tell parents about the activities and parents give money to teacher. And on Monday to Friday, some students is happy because they can learn some favorite activities at school, but some students is not happy because uh, their uh, favorite activities uh, isn't at school. And uh, sometimes uh, some uh, ch children need to learn the mandatory first and some children want to play the computer game so they don't want to learn the activities because them dad and mom are go to the office and this is our solutions but on weekend some the students are happy because they can learn some favorite activities at the weekend. We also need to chat with our teacher. So if we sign up in an activity, the teacher has to know that we signed up. And we also can chat and chat with our friends so they can tell us more things about the activities and we also need to chat with our families so they can know that we signed up in the activity. Okay, the school activities uh, in our platform is initiated by the kids and the uh, school arrange it uh, so they can, when they're doing current uh, activities, they design next year's activities as well. So, school can have an overview and uh, control it by the dashboard. So, uh, the MyZone, the platform, can not only uh, support management of the after school activities, but also support the payment through the whole system. So, okay. Mm. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Good job, thank you. Um, so if you could sum it up in, in three sentences, what are you doing? We create a platform to manage the after school activities for school. Second one, the, the platform is contains requests by children. They initiate it, they manage it, they communicate it in the platform. The system, is safety to children favorites without any advertisement. So children, parents are released. Children are like school. We are relaxed. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you very much for the lovely presentation. 
Um, I wanted to ask you if you um, have heard that there is a platform in Estonia called uh, huviringit.ee. Uh, it's unfortunately only in Estonian at the moment, but maybe you could collaborate with them to uh, expand their or translate their uh, their system so it would be available also for international uh, uh, kids. It's a special platform where you can find interest uh, schools. Yeah, thank you. It could be expanded uh, uh, space based. Yeah, in different schools. Thank you very much. Any, Any more? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Great. So, after seeing the youngest, I hope you, you, you enjoyed it as well to see how, how important it is that everybody is actually included in this kind of events. Everybody can have the possibility to pitch and the possibility to innovate and find new solutions, projects that are um, related to their needs in terms of education. And now we saw a solution about very young people and I think that the next team has something to present related to older people and adult learning. So, without further ado, I would like to invite to the stage Diggy Abbey team. Big applause. Can you give me the paper? Good luck. Green. Yeah. Tere kõigile. Ma olen vist ainukene inimene, kes täna pitchib Eesti keeles. <laughs> Minu nimi on Stefan ja ma olen siis tiimist Diggy Abbey. Kes me siis oleme? Meie Lugu algab siis 11. klassist, kui me tegime õpilasfirma. Ja mina ja mu klassi venad lõime õpilasfirma Digiabi, sest me nägime, et eakatel on palju probleeme nutiseadmetega. Kus me seda nägime? Koronapandeemia ajal suleti koolid ja õpetajad pidid andma kauktunde. Aga me nägime, et paljud õpetajad nendega hakkama ei saanud. Nagu näiteks mina, kelle vanaema oli muusikõpetaja ning ma pidin tema tunde koos temaga põhimõtteliselt läbi viima. Et, ähm, ja. Siis siin on minu teised tiimikaaslased, minu klassivenad. Siin oleme me õpilasfirma laadal. Ja sellel laadal läks meil väga hästi ja me rääksime paljude eakatega. Ja mida me siis selleks lahendamiseks ette võtsime? Me hakkasime enda partneritega pakkuma üle eestilisi nutiringe. Ehk siis me korraldasime nutiringe päevakeskustes eakatele ja me tegime seda siis koostöö Startu Ülikooli, Balt Info Häritasekkekeskuse ja Teliaga. Ja muidugi pakkusime ka koduteenust ja pakkume siia maani, sest et palju teakad on ikkagi kodused ja mõned neist on näiteks invaliidid. Et ükskord üks nii-öelda liikumispuudega inimene vajas meil abi mingi väga tähtsa abiseadma ostmisega, millega ta ise hakkama ei saanud. Ja koduteenusega oleme jõudnud ligi 50 jaakani ja koos nende nutiringidega peaaegu 3000. Ja miks see vajalik on? See on vajalik sellepärast, et meie tehnika on pidevas kirjanemas arengus ja eakad tunnevad ennast välja jäätuna. Ja see tekitab lihtsalt pingeid ja kõik meie teenused on peaaegu juba olemas internetis. Meie tuleviku plaan oleks luua õpilastest koosem võrgustik ja need õpilased saaksid pakkuda enda piirkonnas siis neid samu nutiringe, et teha meie nii -öelda teenust siis jätkusuutlikumaks, kuna hetkel sõidame me peaaegu iga kuu erinevatesse maakondadesse kahekesi. Ehk siis, ja seda võrgustiku looksime me töötukassa abiga. Ehk siis teeks, nii ma, teeks töötukassaga koostööd, et luues miniprojekte meie suurema projekti sees. Et lahendada ka sellega seda probleemi, et noor ei võeta tööle, kuna neil puudub töökogemus. Thank you very much, Stefan, for the presentation. Uh, the Q&A can also happen in Estonian if you feel more comfortable with that. Korduv küsimus, aga mida te siis kolme päeva jooksul õppisite ja tegite siin? 
Ma arvan, et põhiline asi, mis me siin Hekatonil tegime, oli see, et me jõudsime järelduse nii ja üleviliselt me tegelesime siis selle võrgustiku loomise, mitte loomise, vaid mõtete kogumisega, kuidas seda luua. Me küsisime väga palju mentoritelt nõu, kuidas seda võrgustiku oleks põge parem teha ja kuidas motiveerida nii noori selles projektis osavõtmas peale siis palga. Mul on selline küsimus, et kuidas teil rahalise poolega on? Ma saan aru, et te maksaksite noortele palka, aga kas vana inimestele see teenus ka maksab, kuidas need ringid on, kas need maksavad, kas sealt tuleks mingid koolitused, mille eest need päevad maksma või kuidas see pool on? Hetkel on meil üles ehitudad esi nii, et teakas ei maksa ise mitte midagi. Me oleme suutnud teha nii, et kui me olime õpilasfirma, siis maksis sellest näiteks linn ja praegu maksab sellest siis telija. Me loome teljaga koos ka muid materjale teljale ja sellest nad nii-öelda rahastavad meie seda projekti osa. Koos teljaga me oleme loonud ka ühe abilehe nii-öelda nende lehele, et kuidas õpetada oma ajakat. Ja tänu sellele siis telja on olnud nõus meid rahastama ja saame pakkuda seda tasuta. Et tulevikus me loodame sama asja teha. See sihtgrupp Eestis on tõesti väga-väga suur, et kindlasti üle 100 000 inimese praegune jõudmine on sinna 3000 ringi. Et kuidas te hindate, kui palju teil oleks vaja siis seda noorte ressurssi kasutada, et suurema hulga inimesteni jõuda nende abivajajateni? Hetkel... Suudame me teha seda nii-öelda kahekesi, aga see tähendab seda, et iga kuu toimub nii-öelda ainult üks ring erinevas, kusagil erinevas maakonnas, et see ei ole nii-öelda pidev. Ma arvan, et meie tiim peaks olema umbes selline, et ühes maakonnas on vähemalt üks inimene. Arvatavasti Tallinnas siis kaks, eks? Et kus näiteks kahes päevagis, kus saab toimuda iga nädalane ring, nagu meil hetkel Tartus toimub, kus me siis Tartus teeme iga nädal ühe ringi et siis samasugune asi töötaks Tallinnas, kui oleks näiteks kaks inimest, et nad suudaksid seda teha. Great. Thank you so much, team Tegevi and Stefan. Big applause. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear me now. Great. Uh, thank you very much, and actually, thank you for reminding me that, um, that what is special about this hackathon. It's special that we have managed to do it online and also physical and make it all the teams to have the possibility to, to work together and work efficiently. We have very young participants and also very old participants, and also it's very diverse in terms of the teams, in nationalities, in language of speaking, in language of pitching, and language of communicating. So I'm super, super, super excited about that, and I wanted to mention it to actually give uh, the same space opportunities for everyone to come with the way that they are and they want to create the future of education. Uh, we're moving to our next speech before the, having a short break. So I would like to call on stage the team Edu Wise. Please, big applause. Otherwise, 25 years ago, I was pushed by my father to study medicine. I didn't like it, but he did. He did. So I spent 10 years of my life studying medicine. I got graduated as a GP, but I decided to put it aside. I didn't like it. I changed my career path to computer, which I liked it. Imagine how many people are spending their whole life in a job that they don't like it, or how much time is being wasted being educated in a field that is not relevant to their job. And that's the problem. My name is Shahram, uh, founder of Edwise, and along with my team, uh, we are going to present our solution that will address this problem. Our team is a diverse team of professionals, both in the technical side and the business side. Our solution is an online 
data-driven counseling service. It identifies the personality traits of students, compares them against the occupations, the traits that are needed for any occupation based on occupational, occupational standards and job with algorithm, and extracts the, edu the exact educational passes that will help that student go toward uh, desirable or suitable jobs. Our solution has already been implemented and live in Persian language. We have done it in all local company, country, and uh, it is already working, tested, validated with more than 70,000 users, and we are here with our team to, in this hackathon, we wanted to look for the business side of uh, this project, whether it is viable to present it in the European market or not. We have worked on the target market during these two days. We, has, we have identified the target market. We have decided to present our solution as a B2B service to the schools and counselors so that they can offer it to their students. We have identified the, uh, the total available market, serviceable available market, and finally we are targeting to get 5% of this SAM, uh, which is about 300 2,000, uh, 325,000 students in five years. We need about 80,000 euros for one year, and we are ready to launch it if we get uh, the enough funds raised. Thank you, and uh, I'm ready for the questions. Time for questions. Hi. So, um, can you explain uh, concisely what is it do you do in the counseling? What counseling you provide? Well, basically, this is based on a career counseling. We, have, we already have some career counseling services available. Most of them are US and UK based and also from India. Uh, what they do is that they uh, compare the, um, let's say, the, uh, the, every occupation needs a specific personality that can fit that occupation. It's uh, different than the knowledge that is needed for this. So the core con uh, concept is about the uh, compatibility, finding the compatibility of a person with a job. And what we are doing is that to, uh, evaluating it, and it's doing by mass, actually, to uh, quantifying uh, these qualities and to uh, convert them to numbers so that we can offer services, we can offer uh, reports to them. Did I so answer your question? Sorry. Are you running personality tests? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Where do you get the data about uh, how each personality type fits to what occupations? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Basically, we are, uh, we are not the inventor of this, this data. This data is available as an open data with the ONET database. This is the new United States uh, occupational standard, some kind of a standard. They offer it online. They have worked 20 years for uh, Mm, gathering this information and, is, and it is gathered statistically. So we will prefer to relay on this data. So basically, basically your platform is already up and running uh, on the Persian language, right? Yes. Uh, and what's the plan for the European region? Like, is it just to translate or are you taking the culture into account as well? Yeah. Our platform it is divided into three main sections. We have the input, we have the engine, and we have the, we have the output. The input is based on the personality test. The tests are very simple ones, very uh, popular and famous tests, so we can find them in any language. And we have created this system as an in in language independent, so we can implement the test easily. On the other hand, we have the reports. And what we have done is that the reports are very simple, very straightforward, to just guide the students what to do. And this is very simple for us to get translated. So we think it, we can easily uh, offer it in different languages in a short time. Thank you very much, team Edwise. Give a big applause. Thank you.
And uh, we are almost halfway through so far with our peaches. So I don't have hands, so you can leave it on the desk. Sorry. Uh, so we're going to go on a five minutes break to give some refresher to our jury because there has been a lot of thoughts going on. And we will be back soon. See you in five.
secret. We are think all back now in place. We did our five Greek minutes break, which means we did the 10 minutes break, take some refreshments. All the teams are back here. Our jury is here. And I hope we are all energized to continue the pitching marathon going. And I would like to invite on stage the team Transfall. Good luck. The stage is yours. Hi, I'm uh, Guy, founder of Transful. Uh, with all of these technologies we have uh, in today's world, it seems like memorization is not that important anymore. Because why bother if you can just look everything up? Well, we should approach memorization as it is like a spider web. The larger it gets, the easier it is to catch flies, which means to learn something new. The problem is that in our school system, we know not much about like memory techniques because they are rarely taught to us. But they, are, they can be used in learning languages, in maths and so on. There was made uh, this study in Iran where students, a bunch of students had to learn um, 60 words of English vocabulary. But they were um, divided into two groups. One had to use this uh, traditional um, space repetition kind of thing and the second one the group was taught memory techniques, the method of logai, which means that you are using visualization to remember the words, to put them like a, in, a, in some sort of place in your visual mind. And the results were that after f four weeks, the another group remembered 48% more of the words. We got similar results in our test seminars, where we, among other things, uh, teach in five minutes how to remember the last ten uh, prime ministers of Estonia in the right order. So the fun thing is that we get our brain, but we don't really get the manual on how to use our brain. So Transful is a platform that is going to be this manual. Transful is a platform where you can learn about these memory techniques and where you can test them out and share your findings with other people so that we can help each other out with memorizing stuff. Throughout this hackathon, we have built a clickable prototype um, which shows the customer journey from the beginning to databases where he can uh, change his associations at his own. And then we have also this element of gamification where we can test whether, this met, um, whether these uh, associations work for you. But what do I mean by associations? Here is one example that you can find from our platform. Instead of just cramming that the uh, capital of uh, Slovenia is Ljubljana, you are provided with this one. There is like love in English and Ljubljana, which is like Ljubov in Russian, which means also love. So there you have this connection which is almost impossible to forget. Uh, we are using free and premium version. We uh, conducted an interview where we got this amount. We have a team of uh, different memory enthusiasts and also developers. And thank you, that's Ransful. <laughs> Great and in time. Very, very nice. Jury, please, your questions. Yes, thank you. Um, who do you think is the main target group uh, who, who should um, buy themselves this uh, packet? Uh, we would really like to target the students uh, in high school and also like 7th uh, to ninth grade. Um, the main focus, of course, would be the institutions because uh, if uh, we uh, aim for like um, private customers, then the parent would be who is, uh, who is paying, but then we have to do some uh, persuasive work. Why is it actually like worth it? But uh, to actually get uh, students to use these associations and memory techniques, we need also to teachers. We need to teach teachers of them as well. And for that, we are doing different seminars in schools. We have already started out, and we have already three coming next week. Why factual knowledge, if it can be looked up easily nowadays? A factual, uh, sorry? Factual knowledge. I can look up what is the capital of Slovenia, or, or where is that picture taken in, yeah, in no course. time? Yeah, uh, of course. It's true that you can uh, look everything up, but like... Um, 
memorizing stuff, it's not only about uh, how much do you know, it's actually you are improving your memory that, that can help you to even prevent Alzheimer's if we're talking about uh, when you're like older. It's because we don't actually think that we should train our memory, but actually we should train the same way as we uh, take care of our physical body. Hi, so um, help me understand, is it a web application or a mobile application, and is it a subscription service? Uh, it's a web page, uh, yeah, right now we're focus focusing on a web page, and subscription-based model would be the perfect version for us. Great, so thank you very much, Stressful, uh, no. for your pitch. Big applause, please, and you can leave the mic. And, uh, and then I would like to invite on stage uh, Deep Read, please, the stage is yours. Oops, can you give me that? This is going back. Give me a second and I'll fix you up. <laughs> mm. You can start. All right, hello everybody. I'm Igor from DeepRead, and our solution might look like Blinkist. Uh, it might look like um, story shorts, but yeah, that's true because we also provide the summarization of the book concept con uh, content. But but the one thing we do the best is the thing that about this format of this summarization. We do not provide you the short and quick snapshot of what's going on in a book or in a chapter. We are providing more Wikipedia-like internal web page of the book. I am Kodikvi student, and with the team, we interviewed 26 people from the school. And each third person read the books, but absolutely not satisfied with the amount of books he read in this year. Moreover, this problem exists not only for self-learners, but actually for the professionals. Especially in IT field, there you need to read more to become more and more professional, to be on the market. And we are focused on the non-fiction books. In our team, three software developers, I'm freelancer with the two years of experience um, in the coding, I'm student of Kodikvi. In our team, we have Olga. She's also a Kodikvi student, and she's genius prompt engineer. And we have Robert Granken. Uh, he's a student from Glasgow University, computer science. So, during this hackathon, we come, we come, like, um, we complete the list of the literature from reviews and recommendations from Pipedrive, IBM, JP Morgan guys who works there. And we made a prototype. We proceed with the first chapter of the first book to prove the K concept. And let's have a look on this prototype. Actually, that's working web page. You could uh, ask me for the QR code. But basically, yeah, uh, we have the book. Let's click on the book. We have four key ideas from the first chapter. All right, the first one like, seems pretty understandable for me. So let's click and get more context about the second one. Let's click on that. All right, seems that we have more detailful information that helps me to go deeper in understanding of this concept. And we could go deeper, deeper by clicking on the uh, fields that we would like to know more. And like, yeah, basically, oops, yeah. And the end point of this going deeper through these nested layers is the original content from a book. So basically, we're helping people to absorb more information from this limited time they have, because they have jobs, families, they have uh, a lot of things to do. And as the last point, we onboard three paying customers through this hackathon. Yeah. Thank you. Time for questions. <laughs> you have direct competition from generative AI, how do you tackle that? Basically, this prototype uh, made by um, 
GPT model, but uh, we will think about it. Um, that's the question that we will ask for ourselves after that, um, proving their product market fit. So basically, currently, we are focused more on um, to, to, to prove this product market fit. And um, yeah, basically, all of us are developers. So yeah, we, we are using their artificial intelligence. Uh, so yeah, am I answered on your question? Following on on the last question, uh, a brief question: What's your monthly subscription? How much does it cost? Mm -hmm. uh, basically, currently we are um, thinking about the price, and we um, receiving the data from the users. So basically, we ask four key questions: What is too much that you will not pay for us? That is too low that you will think that uh, this is not the great solution, and uh, two additional questions. So basically, we received two euros from the one guy, euro ninety nine from the another, and three euros uh, from the third one. So basically, yeah, uh, seems that the pricing for this product between two and three euros. Okay, and that's now monthly follow subscription. Mm -hmm. Following on on the last question, we live in a world where most people soon will be paying for some kind of an AI chatbot. And if you're paying 20 euros for that, and there's a tool to build tools on that, where you can also have clickable things. So kind of following up the question that if I'm already paying for this thing that can summarize and personalize those answers for me, why should I be clicking your app instead of chatting with AI? Yeah. Basically, here's the two answers on this question. First of all, to speak with the book, yeah, let's talk about the AI chats that allows you to speak directly with the book. You need to know what to answer. Let's imagine the first great guy from the school in front of the professor. First of all, he needs to know what to ask, how to ask it properly, right? So basically the same situation with the AI chat bots to allow you to speak with the book. You need to know what to answer, what to expect, and how to ask it better, right? And the second answer on this question, um, this information, oh, all right. Uh, this information, this content inside the application, verified by the human, and more other verified by the author of this book. So basically, that's this additional uh, value. Yeah, thank you. The, this, all this information inside, um, we plan to verify it with the authors. So basically, we are a platform for the authors to make their old-fashioned books to give them new life in a new digital area. Uh, thank er, you. Era. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think the last sentence was actually your final pitch, right? About exactly what you do. Thank you very much. Thank you for your questions. Big applause to Deep Brain. Yeah, thank you. Click it to me, the microphone there. Thanks. All right. And then I can call to the stage the team Ken, bridging language gaps to foster personalized learning. Big applause. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Rodrigo. I'm from Ken team. Ken is a Dutch word that means um, the the uh, how you understand the world, how you perceive it according to knowledge, and that's what we're go going to try to do with this product. It's about a plugin translator. We are all international students. We all know English, but we're struggling in our classes. So what would this plugin do? Um, so three out of four students are studying in no language different from English. And <clears throat> it's a bit struggling to have teamwork. We all know English, but in a different proficiency. So what can we do about it? Uh, we want to help students have a better effectiveness in their classes and working together. So um, we want to bring this solution to native language other than English speakers. 
that's why we want to make a real-time language translator integrated into every aspect of a student. You, we want a student that is listening to a lecture and can have a translator to its native language of what's going on, because you can be missing some important parts of it. We want to start writing an email and have the help of translator there. We want to check a comment in LinkedIn and how is the most appropriate words you need to use to have a formal professional way. Um, this is a prototype we've been doing. So for example, we are in our Google Classroom. The lecturer has posted some in instructions. We can pop up our extension or plugin to translate tough words we may not understand. We will be tailoring our language proficiently according to our levels. I'm an A1, A1 English, but I speak Spanish, so this add-on will be tailoring according to your knowledge of English. You will be improving. That way it will be giving you some other options. Um, what about uh, also a record speaker? So you're listening to instructions. You can record what the lecturer is saying and give you a report on text of what has been going on so you cannot get behind our, your teammates and could collaborate properly. So direct beneficiaries, lecturers, and students. And um, yep, yeah, that's for all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good applause. Maybe the jury can help you to, to move forward with your presentation. Maybe you can retain the previous one. Questions? Thanks very much. Uh, it, it sounds very uh, practical. Uh, and I want to ask, uh, who are your main competitors? Yeah, so we did a benchmarking, and there were many, especially in, in Google add-ons. So we were saying, OK, there are many, but why right now as a students, we haven't reached them. So maybe there's something missing there, because there are plenty. We try to work as a Grammarly style. So yes, we have some. The difference we are adding to it is the tailoring, and it's the extra, <clears throat> the, we'll be tracking the process of the user by some gamified elements, so they can go back and check, hey, I've checked this number of words this week. Should I keep checking on it? We have an offline dictionary for it. So yeah, we have competitors, but I think the marketing and how we visually UI present it would be, make the difference. A follow-up question, kind of. So you said that there's, especially on Google Chrome, a lot yes. of plugins that do similar things, and you said that students do not reach them. And uh, so, how should they be reaching you, and why? <clears throat> so, yeah, that's a part of the marketing or product developing part we need to work on. Um, we think we have, as we are living that situation at the moment, I think we, we are able to solve that, that part, and we are working on it. <laughs> Do you have some business model ideas already as well? Yeah, that, uh, uh, about the, what we have been doing this hackathon, it has been fin finalizing the prototype in Figma and working on the business model and how to capitalize it. We have a canvas for it. Um, but yes, we, can, we still need to know, for example, how are we going to capitalize it? Is, is it going to be freemium, subscription-wise, similar to what already the competitors are doing? That's probably where we're going to go through, yes. Great. Thank you very much, Ken team. Thank you. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you. you can leave both of them on the table. And it's actually pretty cool to hear how many things you have been thinking just in uh, 48 hours. And I would like to invite to stage the next team, Vanaloku, stories about Baltics. Woohoo! <laughs> no, I have to hear It's a magic. You never know. Okay, so next back. Okay. 
So hello everyone, I'm Stanislav and uh, I'm from Team One Alugo. Uh, we provide personalized audio tours around the Baltics and before I move to the problems and more deeper, I would love to show how an, on one of my days might look like. So uh, this is me last month uh, digging the Tomemagi Hill in Tartu and we found a lot of cool items. And why I'm doing this? Because I'm collecting stories. Because I'm the guide, and my task is to tell the stories, but my goal is to help tourists and experts build connection with Estonia, with Baltics, uh, so they stay or come back next year. Uh, and I'm doing so far good. Uh, but the problem that I faced is that I'm only one human being, I'm physical, and uh, despite the little access to tours, uh, uh, 50, only 50, around 50,000 people who visited Tartu still didn't attend any tour, so they randomly were wandering around Tartu, reading stories without context, uh, and basically had a poor experience as a tourist. So for them, the result that this is just another town they visited, and if you self-explored at some point yourself, probably the only thing that you remember is the city name. So uh, with Manalugo, we want to help tourists and experts to explore and connect with Baltics through fun and exciting stories about the region uh, at affordable rate. So why? Oh, yeah, why? Uh, Tartu 2024, next year, great opportunity, a lot of tourists, and in seven years it would be millennia of Tartu, so it's also really great opportunity, come visit. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you. And our solution is basically personalized uh, application where you can select the city, you can select the, the topics that you would like to learn about the city you're in, uh, select the language uh, or Germany, uh, like how many hours you want to spend, pay us money, uh, and go on your adventure. It's, you have autonomy to explore at any time you want, it's personalized to your interests and hobbies, and it's supervised by historians. So the pricing model is 20 euros for three tours in Tartu, but as we scale, it's the same cost for more tours. Uh, market size is quite promising. We can dig numbers later, but through the hackathon, uh, we went through just needs and um, uh, problems to wireframing solution, and we already started to do iOS app, and we hope to hit 100 uh, sales in December already. So our team consists of developers with over 10 years experience, and I'm finishing just, yeah, me, and we have historian wizards who are helping with the content. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for your pitch, and let's move on to the questions. Happy to answer your questions. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Hi. So, um, coming back to the platform question. So, yes. uh, you showed your product, which is great. And uh, I understand it's a, a software product you need to start building, uh, yeah. but are you really sure there's no existing platforms? Uh, I have answer for your question. I checked out the competitors about the publishing the content. So, they promise up to up to 60% of royalties. So it means they will cut around 70% from your intellectual property, and then the government will charge you taxes. So I don't want to give 7.5 euros from each 10 euro to random people, and I want to save this money for myself and my people. Makes sense. So the follow-up question is that, and, and uh, do I understand correctly, this is your personal brand platform, so you're not inviting others to create tours here, you're uh, creating them yourselves. Uh, so far, we have capabilities to craft ourselves, but uh, I kind of also wondering, like, okay, we can allow people to submit the stories and maybe we can promise some compensation. I haven't, ex I, like, right now I have this hypothesis, but I'm, like, open to test. So you're not, it's not a marketplace platform? And then, No, it's not a marketplace, yes. Yet, though. <laughs> Any other questions from the jury? Everything clear? Do we invest? <laughs> 5,000 euros, I'm good. <laughs> Can the jury get a free tour? <laughs> uh, it's tip based, so free to join, pay in the end. <laughs> Based on your experience, of course, yeah. I'm 
Just curious, uh, are you imagining that you could uh, make some uh, special packages to schools? Uh, yes, yeah, so this is kind of... Um, so there is capitalist and socialist in me, so capitalist says to me, I have to earn money to prove that the idea is valid. Socialist says, well, the kids should receive everything for free. I mean, or at low cost. So I can see how it could be used in process. Even the stories that I tell, of course, I'm kind of, we adjust them. Uh, but that's also the content for the historian teachers to say, kids say, oh, I heard this story on Vanalugu. And they're like, okay, let's explore what are the facts and what are kind of opinions or attitudes of this person who tells the tour. So that's also like, kind of a part of what is like, you know, history. Like you have to define the facts and opinions. Great, thank you very much, thank you. Logo. Well, it's on me. I, I said uh, the technical equipment works as magic up here. Thank you very much and looking forward to explore. Whoops, you have more slides. Okay, thanks for, for fixing that. So I would like to invite the next team on stage, uh, Study Drive, where are you? Yay! Tulke, tulke. Oh, the whole team is coming. Interesting. <laughs> Mike. How does the remote work? So, back and forth. Okay. Hello. My name is uh, Kulder, and I am the team leader of Study Drive. Um, we are trying to create an AI that would help with uh, studying. Um, we are working on a more personalized AI that would help people. Um, our team consists of uh, two uh, software engineers. Uh, they are in the crowd. And uh, two students. I am also a student. Uh, and our key problem is that um, um, well, uh, we are we are the society we are living in. Um, we have too much information available. We need to pinpoint down the right uh, information we need to study because otherwise we will um, struggle with uh, focusing on the right thing that we want to work on and that will cause us to lose motivation and focus on the right thing we want to do. So our solution for that was to create an AI that could uh, possibly be personalized. So basically, we have uh, you make an account with a lot of information about yourself. Obviously, uh, it would be uh, um, uh, secret. So basically, you wouldn't need to put any personal information in terms of name or something. You just uh, input the username, password, and maybe a phone number for two-step verification, because it will save all the information which you can access later on. Um, we also have already made a prototype to show that it is possible to create something like this in already maybe 10 hours. Uh, the prototype currently um, only specializes in uh, Estonian language learning, as even Duolingo does not have that. And I find that as a problem. But even if Duolingo would have that, then um, we would have a specific problem. We would have to learn English before we can learn Estonian language, for example. So here is our prototype, I shall. What? Uh, could somebody please press play? Introducing Study Drive, your key to personalized learning. This innovative AI chatbot understands your preferences, creating a unique path to knowledge. 
Picture tailor-made lessons, adaptive exercises, and personalized insights. With Study Drive, learning comes to life according to your style. It's not just a chatbot, it's your educational co-pilot. Transform every study session into a personalized journey. Study Drive, the future of learning is in your hands. Discover a new way to learn, entirely tailored to you. So, here in the... Okay. Your time is up. I gave you one more minute to show the prototype, so now okay. we can go to the Q&A, please. I have to say thank you, yes. and I have to say thank you to all the mentors who helped us come up with ideas. How... Great. Thank you. Give them a big applause. I know it can be very stressful being on stage, and sometimes, you know, we don't look at the clock, but let's make it as fair as possible and give them some maybe more space to understand the idea. Maybe you can summarize in one sentence what exactly you're doing. Um, so we are organizing that uh, chatbot who gives us the person. So there is a personalized uh, chatbot. It's like something like ChatGPT, but we are. But we are trying to um, uh, give you more. Uh, uh, specialized inf information based on what you may need because it is hard to, for example, if you would Google something, you can't use the same method to Google something you need as uh, when you input something into ChatGPT, for example. So we are also trying to technically improve ChatGPT then to give us the answers we need to study more efficiently. Did that answer to your question? What did you say? Do you have some other questions? Yeah. Cool. Then, thank you very much for your presentation. Big applause. <laughs> you can make them say. You can give them. There. Thank you very much. And then we can. Oh, I need also my notes. Yes, I tend to forget sometimes. So. We have heard about uh, study drive, and then we can move to the next uh, team that is Cloud Education. Please come on stage. You take this one. Great. Hello, I'm Gatti from Clara Education. We are a team of seven, and we have their web developer, uh, HR manager and marketing manager, we have educational innovator, and we have specialists in healthcare, education, and youth work. What connects us is the belief in visual facilitation. It is the approach that allows us to put complicated information into visual approach. So you can see the difference, right? So here we can see the big picture, we can connect information, and most important, we can engage people. We interviewed over 30 Estonian school leaders who brought out that there is a one big challenge they face. Teachers do not feel connected with their overall vision in school, and it makes it harder to do the everyday cooperation or execute the bigger strategical plans. It also came out that they need now, within one year, to update their curriculum because it was updated in national level. So we made a solution for them. And imagine now that you are a school principal who need to execute this kind of big process. Where to start? What to do? And imagine that you get this kind of uh, five-meter roadmap that you can put on the wall. You can ask your people on a journey. You see why you do it, when, it's, when it will end, and you can go step by step. You can add here post-its 
and also all the steps are supported with visual materials to uh, make uh, the conversations more meaningful, but also it's supported with digital materials where you can put the outcomes. But this is just the one solution. At the moment, we have uh, 18 schools on board who's paying us, and it gives us opportunity to uh, evaluate, is it working? What is the impact of visual facilitation to the cooperation and leadership? So within this hackathon now, we created the platform where more this kind of uh, 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 processes can be put and we want to empower the school leaders with it and here you can see can be different processes and um, it makes it uh, more easy to access more be more school leaders can have it so in uh, clara education we believe that Great education starts with great leadership, and therefore we empower school leaders. Thank you very much for your presentation, Team Cloud Education. Big applause, Thank you. please. And we can move on on the Q&A now. You can give it. Hi, Team Clara. So, uh, first question is, um, you're providing a consultancy service. Do I understand correctly? No, actually not consulting, because uh, we are not uh, deeply experts in all of it. We are so, uh, giving the tools that are worked out with experts, but the experts are actually the ones who are in school and who's using our tool. So we are not consulting them. Okay, so you're building a platform for schools to deal with their leadership uh, challenges. Yes. Okay. Tell us more about the progress you made during the hackathon. Yes, so during hackathon, uh, we made all this platform. So I can't put the, the slides anymore, but... Uh, you can bring them back. I yeah, guess. at the moment, we just had it in Google Drive, all this, uh, what we uh, gave to school. And uh, we printed out manually, sent out manually, but now we want to have this um, environment or platform where actually they can come and they can start doing themselves uh, to, to print out uh, how big they want it and also all the videos will be uh, more uh, online based and we don't need to consult, uh, yeah, we actually consult them how to use the process and then it can be in videos and uh, written things. Things. What is the difference between your app or solution and between uh, usual process drawing apps or programs? What is the main difference? Because uh, these apps that you can, where you can just use or use the visual things, there um, you have to create uh, this. Um, uh, mm, <laughs> information that is in, you have to think it out yourself. But here, we have done it already with experts. So actually, it's all evident-based. It's not like we just created, there is people behind it who know exactly what steps are needed to do in development plans, in curriculum uh, updating. So it's, it's not just visualizing uh, environment. And uh, one size fits all. Uh, I think that in this way we can see it. Uh, it's based on competence model of uh, school leaders. So we want to be sure that we cover all the competencies. And of course, we can't say it fits to everyone, but we can cover the most general things. Thank you very much, team. Thank you. Big applause, please. And then we can move to the next team, that is Equilibrium. Please come on stage. Microphone and click it. The red, the green one, and you move forward. Hi, uh, I'm Precious. Well, before I begin, I would like to say, um, a quick story. 
Yeah. Um, in today's world, we have a lot of personal assistants in our house. For example, we have the Alexa. We have some robots. And this robot like, Alexa, can you please clean the room? The robot moves around and begins to clean everywhere. Uh, for somebody that is lazy like me, I will buy such a thing. Um, also, we can say, Alexa, can you turn off the light? Just because probably we are lazy or tired to just walk up to the switch and turn it off. Uh, so what this is, means is kind of like <clears throat> a balance equ equilibrium. Uh, and my team and I have looked into this and said we want to bring this into education to balance the equilibrium between um, teachers' SS workload and students' less impact of knowledge. So we come up with an idea to develop an app, an AI-based app, um, whereby teachers will upload their curriculum, uh, textbook, uh, whatever materials they're using for that particular session, and um, the AI generated study plan for the students. Um, however, this is like um, a demo for the app, but not the app, just a demo platform yet. Uh, so this is like the teacher's login. Um, then this is where they have to upload either um, the exercise or you can generate a lesson plan for the students and um, some other things, exciting features on the app. Um, Okay, yeah, for the students, um, we are not actually getting their real profile, but we use another means to get an uh, idea on what they like, like um, creativity, what do you like doing in your hobby, and uh, this way the teacher would definitely know um, the level of understanding this particular student uh, can perform on. Like, for example, uh, I can teach mathematics in class and I can say two plus two, four, because I'm the teacher, but uh, this student will be like, uh, I don't really understand, and we'll go back, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, then you add them together, you have four. Another person will be like, he doesn't still understand, you use another method, like uh, you bring four pencils here, when you add the four of them together, you still get the number four. So um, we are trying to bridge this gap in class using um, AI so that the teacher will have less workforce and the student will have much impact on a particular subject. So this is what I and my team are actually looking at to resolve. So you can join my team and let's make education more fun in class. Thank you. Thank you very much, thank you, Equilibrium, for your pitch. And then we can move to the questions. And we're joined by one more team member <laughs> to bring the equilibrium, right? Yeah, to balance. Can you please summarize in three sentences what are you doing? Okay. I focus on functionality, okay? First of all, we create personalized experience, learning experience for students. It's first goal. Personalized content exercises individually for everyone created by teachers using um, people's competence models. It, it's, uh, so there are some specifics. Secondly, yes, we create uh, lesson plans. And also we uh, adjusting sustainable goals, uh, educational goals into uh, process. We can do some analytics. Uh, in Estonia, majority of um, uh, pupils and students and teachers uh, use different learning apps which interact between a teacher and student. Uh, do you think that uh, you can create something totally new or is it something that could be uh, added to the uh, apps that, that, are, uh, that, uh, that are already at place? Uh, we believe it is new for many reasons. Uh, first of all, in our understanding, it is real uh, personalization because we uh, factually create individual contexts in particular context. We also address very really, like, deep level like uh, values like sustainability in where we, trying, uh, we, we have an opportunity to connect for example, schools' goals and in sustainability of something with particular content, how students or uh, people are taught in those values, etc. And we can measure it, and we can see the whole progress. It is the best interest, of course, for administration, but we go a bit deeper in the sense where 
a bit more innovative that, than even Google Class or something like this. Then thank you very much, Team Equilibrium. Big applause. <laughs> and then thank you very much for leaving them so silently there. <laughs> and then we can move to our next team. And I would like to call on stage Team Inu. Big applause. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can my teammates? You can share the one because I need to talk to you. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Tim, and we're creating an app that will redefine your language learning experience. Now, we are avid language learning app users ourselves, and we know the struggle when the initial motivation is gone, and instead of completing your daily exercise on your app, you go procrastinating on social media. We have a simple solution for that, an app that will block all of your social media until you spend the dedicated time for language learning. Now, how does it work? When the user is registered on our app, they may choose which platform they want to dedicate more time to. For example, it can be linguist to study Estonian language. Then they choose how many minutes per day they want to spend on this app. So it can be 15 minutes learning Estonian per day. After that, they choose which apps they want to block from distracting them. It can be social media like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, etc. And after that, the magic happens. If the user tries to access the social media before they have spent 15 minutes on Linguist, they are not able to do it. They get a pop-up window which says, hey, before getting your fast dopamine, go actually study the language, complete a lesson in Linguist. So that's how it works. Now, throughout Hackathon, we pivoted our idea several times, but uh, we were able to validate it through conducting a survey. We conducted a survey with over 40 language learning app um, users, and 80% of them said that they actually have this problem. Also, we got 10 emails from users who were uh, enthusiastic in participating in beta testing of our app. So the next logical step for us would be actually creating the app. We have two developers on our team, and we're going to do it either way, but with the additional funding, we would be able to outsource some of the work to other professionals like designers and uh, marketing specialists to make the app more user-friendly. That's it. Thank you for your attention, and let's build Inno together. Great. Thank you very much for the pitch, and let's move on to the questions. Hi. Uh, first question, when can I download this? <laughs> <laughs> You have some clients already. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, carrying on, um, defensibility. So uh, I've used loads of these apps that I can block my social media with, and it's even built into Android, at least, as a system feature that I can set up uh, ways that I can't access some apps. Uh, why should I be choosing your app if this feature is kind of already built into my phone? Okay, great question, thank you. So our main differentiator from our competitors, other apps that block social media, is that we tie it to actually productive language learning. So it's not just blocking your social media for some amount of time, it's, uh, well, it's blocked until you spend 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or any time you set productively on another app, which is language learning app in our case. Carrying on, there's um, loads of uh, goal-based applications, either for learning language or tasks or general habit apps. Why did you focus on only on language applications? So we thought that focusing on language learning would be more suitable in the frame of this hackathon and this challenge or language breach you do. But we, th we see that there may be some potential for some other applications, not only language learning apps, yes. Okay, thank you. How much work does it require to develop this app? Uh, so, 
the, the technical solution is not uh, that difficult because we are not creating like a language learning app from scratch. We're just creating uh, this addition, basically a bridge between a language learning app and blocking social media. So that's not very complicated task and we don't need a lot of uh, software developers to do this. Great. Thank you very much, Eno. Looking forward to try your app, to be honest, to stop spending time in other places. Big applause to you. Thank you. I can take that. You can leave that there. Great. And then I can call the next team on stage. That is Kaimera. I mean, you can take your time if you want. <laughs> Tere! Oho. Ma olen Rasmus, tema on Kaidi, süles on Anna, kuskil on Merilis ja me oleme tiim Kaimera. Ja meie tegelesime kogu nädalavahetuse sellise ideega, mille nimeks me panime koosõppelaud. Siis see probleem, mida me üritame natukene leevendada, on siis see, et meie klassiruumid hetkel nii selle mööbli kui ka selle tehnika osas, mis seal klassiruumides on, selle paigutus toetab sellist ühesuunalist õppikäsitlust. Ning ta ei toeta piisavalt selliseid tuleviku oskusi nagu koostöö, koosõppimine ja probleemi lahendus. Et isegi kui see tehnika seal klassi ees on, siis see õppikäsitlus on ikkagi sama. Ehk siis klassi ees on see kõige targem õpetaja, kes siis õpilased väga kasuliku infoga lihtsalt üle kallab ja loodab, et midagi jääb meelde ka. Aga nagu paljud uurimused on näidanud, siis tegelikult see nii ei ole. Nii, ja siis meie lahendus, mida me üritame natukene seda probleemi leevendada, on siis see, et tuua see tehnoloogia sealt seina küljest siia ette laua peale et oleks käe ulatuses ja kõik oleksid ümber laua võrdsed ja saaksid koostõtteja. Ehk siis me loodame, et see lahendus aitab kaasa sellisele koosõppimisele, katsetamisele, probleemi lahendusele ja muudab õppe rohkem mängulisemaks. Nüüd, kui tehnik saaks käima panna videod, siis... Siin on see ja nüüd kaidi väsel. Aha, äkki äele saab maha panna, see tegelikult... Siin on meie prototüüp, kus siis õpetaja suuda saab ühe nupu vajutusega muuta seinale projitseeritava lauale projektsiooniks. Ja meil oli teine video ka, mis näitab siis seda sisu, kuidas me saame selle suhteliselt null kuluga muuta selle laua interaktiivseks. Ja siin on meie demo sisu, mis õpetab kolme kõige olulisemat sõna eesti keeles. Mõneks on kass, õun ja porgand, nagu me kõik teame. Ja siis järgmised sammud, et kuna siin see programm oli hästi tihe, siis me väga palju selle tarkvara poolega tegeleda ei jõudnud, aga sellega tuleks eraldi mõnel nädalavahetusel oma häkaton teha ja edasi arendada. Ja siis see tehniline prototüüp ka tuleks natuke edasi arendada, tuleks õpetajaid kaasata ja kindlasti tuleks seda koolides testida. Ja meie tiimis on siis üks õpetaja hetkel, siis üks endine õpetaja ja siis on üks võivitas töötav laste ja noorte looguskiirendi disainer. Ete! Rasmus, big applaus! Ja palun küsimused. I'm quite excited about this, uh, building uh, physical things myself. So, uh, did you, uh, did I understand correctly, you built the mirror prototype yourself? Yes. So, this is the first prototype to make it as easy as possible to create, go from uh, 
the wall uh, projection into uh, tabletop projection. So we use a mirror. So if you put the mirror like uh, approximately 45 degrees, then you can have the image here. And then we use a web camera for the marker tracking. This is how we can make it interactive. Okay, uh, great approach. Instead of you know, a new projector, you can use the existing one. But as you're looking at your team and future, do you see yourselves more of as the content creator for the platform, the physical builder of the mirror concept, or what's your approach to uh, uh, the scalability and the business side of this thing? So. We, I think we should uh, map the landscape, so there's no point in uh, re-eventing the wheel. So if there's like great content available, then we should just uh, develop something that the already existing content could be used on the table. But I think uh, the first steps would to be to provide like the, the projector add-on, so that schools can easily just uh, plug and play the add-on on top of their already existing projector. And yeah, I think that would be the first approach. Mul on üks tehnilisem küsimus. On palju koole, kus on projektorid välja vahetatud, nende projektorite vastu, mis on tafli kohal ja näitavad otse taflile, ehk siis nendel see peegli meedad ei tööta. Kas teil on plaan ka näiteks nendel projektoritele midagi välja mõelda, et saaks ka sellistes klassides õpetajad teie lahendust kasutada? Ma arvan, et seal saab ka selle peegli panna, aga lihtsalt jah, meil endal seda katsetanud ei ole, et kuna need short throw ja ultra short throw projektorid on hästi kallid, siis ma kahtlustan, et neid koole, kus ära on vahetatud, et neid on väga vähe. Aga jah, selles mõttes, et selle ultra short throw ka ilmselt õnnestuks lihtsalt teha suurem laud, aga kuna ta on jah, füüsiliselt sinna juba tafli ette pandud, siis muudab võib olla ka erulisemaks, aga noh, siin ongi tehniliselt, me peamegi kardistama need erinevad projektoreid, samas, et mis on see optimaalne veebikaamera, mida kasutada ja nii edasi, et siin on palju seda tehnilist asja ka veel teha. Surtanu, Rasmus ja meeskond Kaimera. Võik aplaus, suur aplaus, aitäh. You can put it here. And then I can call the stage the next team, that is Vestlur. Big applause, please, and the stage is yours. Oh, somebody else? Yes. Yes, sure. I will just leave here. Hello, we are Wessler. Our six-person team consists of entrepreneur, software and game developers, media, marketing, linguistics, and interaction specialists. Currently, there are no alternatives that offer a focused speech practicing experience in Estonian. In fact, this entire idea came from a real-life situation our team had. We are offering a VR-based conversational experiences that, offer that are powered by AI. The aim is to offer customized experiences to help people passively practice Estonian in real-life scenarios. For novice learners, this is an ice-breaking first step to have a stress-free experience with Estonian. Our target group contains private companies seeking to train employees, permanent or long-term residents of other nationalities, people arriving for the purpose of visit, work, and study. One of the experiences we designed was echoed by many international people. Many felt that doctors didn't care about them enough. Estonians like to keep things short and straightforward. As compared to other doctors in other countries who are a bit more empathetic, personal, and emotionally available. To many, this is a cultural shock, and they were not prepared for it. Now we have a demo for you, uh, where we can showcase a doctor's visit, where you can talk to an AI avatar and see the interaction. Can you please play the demo? Tere, mul on Natalia. 
Tere Natalia, kuidas saan teid aida? Mul on peavalu. Peavalu võib olla põhjustatud erinevatest asjadest, nagu stress, une või toitumisharjumuste muutused. Kas saaksite kirjeldada oma sümptomeid natuke täpsemalt? Aitäh. Yes, this is something we came up in two days and we spent a night and day preparing this. And everything came up in just exactly two days. So why VR? VR is the most immersive tool for experience-based learning. However, we recognize that the VR accessibility can be a problem. And we also are offering a web-based solution more akin to 360 video with all the same interaction capability. Our monetary model has two opportunities. We are offering individual user subscription and custom plans for enterprises. Our solution model can be transformed to use different languages, getting familiar with any scenario that has real life application. Our solution model. Thank you uh, very much. Well, Your time is over. Uh, one more thing. No, <laughs> thank you so much. Big applause, please, the best. Thank you so much. <laughs> We can move to the questions and mind that you can add your one more thing somewhere there. Thank you so much. Please. Yes. Any questions? No. Yes, please go. This is the team. Hey. Uh, so I understand that you uh, definitely need these VR uh, glasses for that. So uh, I don't know how common it is. Do you guys all have VR glasses at home? and? Uh, all other expats and others uh, who are coming to Estonia or other countries? Uh, yes, uh, this is, uh, we have two answers for this particular thing. Uh, in Tallinn University, while we were developing this, we had access to VR equipment, Oculus Rift, to develop this whole process. Usually universities have VR uh, capabilities that can use this to give an enhanced experience. Uh, other than that, we have researched that you can buy $2 VR kits plug and play on their phone, uh, available everywhere. And also, if somebody is not really want to use VR, there is a web-based solution as well. Any other questions? Hi. Um, business money, where does it come from? Uh, at the moment, we have not worked that part out, uh, but we hope to get partners involved, talk to more people, and develop some model for that. Uh, yes. Uh, we basically have uh, some potential clients like enterprises, like banks and uh, farm companies, because I work in banks. I also work at uh, more than 20 years in IT, and I know basically all management or all enterprise in Estonia. And for me, it's quite easy to communicate with them because we're basically friends, and basically they share the idea. Okay, well, one last question then. Um, simulations in VR, um, why not real life? Why do we need to simulate human interaction instead of having genuine human interaction? Okay, so now we're talking about the Estonian oddities. The straightforward <laughs> face, the introvertness of Estonian people. So we're trying to do that icebreaker thing so that a person uh, who is not really accustomed to this gets a little bit easier trying to understand the Estonian language, people, culture, so many different things. I think one of the team members will add something. Yeah. I just also wanted to add, remember yourself uh, teaching English and uh, uh, how did you feel the first time trying to speak to somebody, to some cashier abroad? You like was feeling anxious, and it's happening when you learn any other language. So to overcome this barrier, to train yourself to imitate this real life scenario, speaking to somebody, but like this person, this AI version, uh, this VR version of person will not give you a judgmental look or just like correct your mistakes. So you feel, so you feel yourself more comfortable, and this is like the, the biggest idea of doing the VR. Great. Thank you very much, Tim Wessler. Big applause. Thank you. We can leave it over here. We are out of time. Two words. No. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, I, I, I believe cult, uh, Ministry of Culture and uh, the INSA are potentially interested in having a chat, at least uh, see your prototype. 
Great, thank you very much. This is your pitch. This was your time on stage. And again, congratulations. And then we can move to the next team. I'm sorry that I pushed so much on time, but uh, I think we have spent a long time here. And it's great that you can find collaborations. And it's great to see the passion that everyone wants to share whatever they have built. But let's give to everyone the same opportunity. Uh, next on the list is uh, Estonian Odyssey. Speaker is here, clicker is here, slides will be here. So good luck. <laughs> Uh, hello everyone, my name is Diana and I represent Estonian Odyssey and uh, we made a game to learn Estonian language uh, through stories. This is our team, I am a UX researcher, we have game designer on board, two script writers and one illustrator to make it all happen and uh, two fun facts, four of us study in this university and only two of us speak Estonian fluently. So that's the uh, demographics. Uh, we made a narrative based game and this is kind of a game when a plot and characters are the main game mechanics and um, you control the game, you control the story. With your choice, you change it. So uh, our target audience is everybody who comes to Estonia from abroad. And we imagine them going to Estonia by plane. And already on the way, they are playing our game. And when they come, they know their terre, paloon. And from day one, we accompany them on their learning journey. And for today, we already have a functioning prototype. And if you use this QR code, please take a photo if you'd like to. You can already play it. And uh, this is the first game. Uh, you will see a scene with illustrations, with uh, exposition and options you can choose. And also, it's multi-device, so you can play phone, tablet, laptop, anything. I'll proceed for now. Our business model is our clients are universities and Erasmus, business and startups, and NGOs, because these organizations are interested in adapting people uh, coming to Estonia and learning Estonian language. And for each of them, we have several pricing packaging. We uh, expect universities being uh, comfortable with yearly subscription plans. For companies, we offer paper seat approach. And for NGOs, we give 20 free seats so that they could spread this to their, uh, uh, to their people. And in the future, we are looking to uh, evolve our game. We will create more topics featuring social problems and so on. We'll create personalization of learning, so you can create your avatar and your name and so on. And we want to localize it to other languages. Right now, you will learn from English. And in the future, you can learn from Russian, Finnish, Ukrainian, and you name it. Then we are looking to incorporate in languages proficiency levels, A1, you name it, and improving accessibility. And also, in far, far future, exporting it to other countries. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Looking for your questions. Great. Thank you very much for your pitch. And then we can move to questions. Yes. How do you differentiate from competitors? So, um, Basically, we haven't found any popular narrative-based game that uh, is made for language learning. And this approach made it very well in academia. There were a lot of tests for learning English based on narrative-based games. And we uh, made some surveys around university asking folks, would you like to try it? And they said, wow, that would be amazing. And uh, these are two pillows we base our solution on. Thank you for your question. In that case, go please there. Uh, is there an age group for your uh, game? Is it suitable for uh, uh, young people also, or is it for grown-ups? Uh, thank you for your question. I think it's a great opportunity for growth, because at the moment we only have one game ready for international students coming to Estonia, 
but in the future we might look into youngsters and also I think people who come here to arrange the marriage is quite a big um, uh, sample of population also uh, people who come to here to work uh, 28,000 in 2021 based on research and uh, um, yeah so it's a point for improvement at the moment I think we're good all right uh, can I add something as we have some time I left? would say no if it's possible <laughs> uh, so uh, just one quick announcement if uh, any organization is looking to try this solution with uh, uh, their own people, we are open for propositions. Thank That's you. That's great. And action, a call to action was actually very important. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for your pitch. And I, I have to say that I'm a little bit sad that I already speak Estonian uh, because I have heard so nice solutions as learning tools for learning the language. So I might not be in the testing population, but it would be great uh, yeah, to, to test if you want to learn the language. And then we can move to our next team that is Uppivaim. Big applause and welcome on stage. Tere. Minu nimi on Anne. Mina olen platformi Mesilas Aru ideede arendaja ja tiimi Õppi Vaim liige. Me oleme õpetajad. Tulime siia erinevatest Eesti maosadest. Me õpetame eesti keelt muu keelena lastele. Ja meile on väga tuttav see olukord, see probleem, mis praegu on. Mina õpetan muu keelsed lapsed, lapsi juba 20 aastat. Ja mis probleem on? Me näeme, et õpetajad väsinud, õpetajad on stressis, nad vajavad tugi, Nad vaevad õlatunned, enese kindlust, aga puudub selline tugi võrgustik, mis toetaks neid igat pidi. Ja meie lahendus on väga loogiline. Me pakumegi luua selline tugi võrgustiku, mis pesitseks platformil Mesilas Aru. Mesilas Aru platform koosneb kolmest osast. Üks nendest on suhtlus, teine on metoodika. Ja kolmas on materjalid. Suhtluses õpetaja saab osaleda õpiringides, saab jagada oma muresid, saab küsida nõu, saab jagada oma edulugusid. Metoodikas on õppevideod, on olemas info kursuste kohta ja on olemas ka nippi kohver. Ja materjalides õpetaja võib leida üles materjali erinevatel teemadel, jätta tagasi side, hinnata, jagada oma materjali ja, kui, ja seda materjali saab üle vaadata ka ekspert ja kui ekspert arvab, et see on vaatamisväärt ja siis ta võib ka anda kvaliteedi märgi. Ja me... Ei ole ainult õpetajad. Me oleme ka lapse vanemad ja tunneme seda probleemi mitmelt poolt. Sest õnnelik õpetaja on hea õpetaja, õnnelik õpetaja ka õnnelik õpilane on. Ja meil on väga hea idee, hea, mis on läbi mõeldud, aga me vajame abi, teie, teie abi, et õpime koos, õpetame koos. Ja palun, jätke meelde. Ja me oleme tiim õpivaim ja platform Mesilas Aru. Eesti ma vajab meid. Suur tänu. Õpivaim. Ja hea meelega vastame küsimustele. We can answer the question in English. My, my teams help me in English. Kui valmis on Eesti õpetajad jagama oma materjale? Ja, kui me vaatame, kuidas on läinud e-koolikotil ja koolielu platformil ja näiteks Tevo õpiveebil, 
siis jah, tundub, et raha eest on õpetajad valmis jagama neid. Aga võibolla ka kvaliteedi märgi pärast. Te nimetasite, et ekspert saab anda siis nii-öelda hinnangu. Kes on teie silmis ekspert, kes hinnangut annab ja kuidas te valite, et just tema on ekspert? Kuna me nüüd pakume sellist tervik lahendust, ütleme õmblustete lahendust eelnevatele nendele ütleme, ma ei tea, platformidele, siis e-kooli kot ju suutis leida enda aine eksperdid, et me kasutaksime nende kogemust. Meil on juba pakuti api Tallinna ülikooli õppejõud, on valmis koostööd tegema. Palju selline platform õpetajale maksaks, et kas tal on mingi kuune subscription, mida ta peab ost, ma oleks seda tasuta? Kuna meie oleme sellised... Me oleme teist pedagoogid, siis meil sellele küll vastust ei ole praegu. Aitäh küsimusest! Minu arutas selle idee juures kõige tähtsam ongi see kogukond ja see, mis sellest kohast tuleb, et kas selleks peab tegema eraldi platformi, et kas seda kogukonda ei saaks kuskil mujale viia näiteks meidest läkki? Me täiesti nagu mõtlesime, et kui keegi seda ei tee, et nagu rahastada ei soovi, siis jah, me alustamegi rohujuure tasandilt, sest et see on oluline teema kõikidele õpetajatele Eestis. Kõik asub praegu erinevates kohtades ja me tahame, et see on üks koht, kus kõik teavad, mida nad saavad sealt leida, otsida ja kasutada. Et selles mõttes on see üks koht ja kõik teavad. Aga... Vaadake, täna peal me räägime nagu õmblusteta haridusest, eks ole, miks meil ei ole siis õmblusteta haridusplatformi? Suurta noh. Aitäh. Very good, team Ubevaim. Thank you for your pitch and we can move to the next team, virtual 3D lab. Please come on stage. Tulge, tulge, big applause. We are very close to the end. So it's the green one. Thank you. Hello, my name is Thomas, and I am introducing you the idea of building a virtual 3D lab that would work on every device. Uh, but before we move to a solution, then I would like to talk, go back 25 years ago when I was a kid, and I was really struggling with uh, books and understanding the concepts of physics and chemistry just from the images. But I do remember uh, at that time there was a Nokia 3110 mobile phone, and one best apps on it was a snake uh, game that was interactive and we could play with it. Time has passed and uh, I moved on to a high school and we did uh, uh, in a chemistry class experiments. And one of the experiments went uh, bad because a glass flask blew up and broke. No one got harm, harmed. But one interesting thing about it that um, I do not remember a single um, experiment that was good or when was done right way, but I remember only the one that failed. And time went by, as it always goes, and I moved to uh, university and started studying a master's degree in physics, where my thesis topic was to build remote control laboratory. And there we had to build remotely controlled laboratory where we would measure radiation of uh, mat radioactive material, because uh, we have to do it remotely, we can't bring dangerous materials to class. And some of those uh, materials uh, measuring to get data, you have to measure for one, two weeks, so it's not viable to do it in class. And before I move to solution, I know you what you're thinking. There's a lot of competitors out there, GoLab, NextLab, class, we are Futu class. So uh, I, we also know about it. So let's move to something that differentiates us. Our goal is to build a website that would provide 3D virtual environment and it does not require VR glasses. So we, Q students can do experiments that are dangerous or take too long time, and we could uh, bring uh, individual students or group work to those virtual labs. Uh, we did uh, market research, there's 500 schools, and we will target around 100 of them and try to sell this product to them 
through uh, community events. And the future plans is that once we have a viable, uh, minimum viable product in Estonia, then we could move to Europe and offer full curriculum. And if it's uh, successful, then we could sell it to a global market. And it's our team, uh, Victoria, who is designer and built those slides, and Siret, who is uh, good with business and marketing, uh, and Manuel and Thomas, uh, who are... Uh, uh, software engineers with 10 years of work experience. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. And you can keep it for the Q&A. So, we can move to the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. You said a really important thing. Um, virtual labs exist a lot. I've used most of them. And... Um, they're, like you said, uh, one of your differentiators is being web-based. Most of them are web-based. Either are they VR or 3D, it doesn't matter. But the question is about um, content. How are you creating the content? Is it yourselves or you're building a platform on which you want others to create content? Uh, really great question. Um, when I was a master's student, then um, uh, I was creating remote controlled laboratories myself, and I created six uh, separate labs with uh, help of our professors. So we will have this kind of um, expertise at the Tallinn Te University of Technology to create it, yes. A follow-up question is about the quality assurance of the content. So your experience is, if I guess, is in creating actual working laboratories for science and research, but you're speaking about science education, which is a bit of a different thing in that sense. You're not doing real science in the classroom. You're teaching about what's the science about, and you're learning, you're teaching uh, the needed knowledge to go into science, for example. And so educational-wise, what's your content creation strategy, or how are you saying that your content is uh, according to their cu uh, curriculum, for example. Uh, really good, straight to the point. And uh, the content, we would, we are, because uh, we, are develop we are just starting to develop this website, then we can communicate and work with the real teachers so that they could help us to create the content. And uh, since I am uh, myself uh, with a physics background, then I can verify um, that it is uh, realistically and uh, looks realistic and works correctly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So now we can have on stage ISOS uh, to present their uh, idea. I know it has been a long time for you and for me and for the jury and for everyone, so sorry for technical glitches in the end. But are you ready to pitch? Uh, yes? Yeah. The stage is yours. Give her a big applause, please. Well, hi, my name is Natalie and I'm a founder of ISOS Idea Trading Platform. And it's a social media for publishing your uh, ideas. Mm. I'm trying to switch green. I don't know why. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, about uh, our application, T too much. Uh, uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh. Yes. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, here in uh, my application, it's possible to uh, make auctions and uh, take part in them, organize uh, tenders and take part in them, um, uh, maybe sell an idea or share it for free, free and uh, so you can also sell description of idea. And also you can use my applications to, um, to, to share donations. And uh, currently we are available uh, on uh, App Store and uh, Google Play. <clears throat> we became uh, available uh, this September and uh, also we have a website isos.ee and 
uh, from here you can uh, also read uh, about our product uh, and uh, maybe try it. So um, um, the pl platform uh, is itself uh, stands for uh, sharing knowledge and creativity and it motivates people to create and uh, learn more. <clears throat> so, um, and... Uh, uh, and uh, that, that's how our application can uh, help you to spend time usefully. So uh, in my team, there are uh, founders, two founders, one of them is me, and uh, uh, workers, they are, are, uh, they are um, uh, engineers, they are programmers, they are, are helping us making the app, and we are waiting uh, for marketing people and uh, uh, users who may, um, may, uh, can uh, probably test our application. And uh, I also shared a QR code uh, for uh, our website. <clears throat> well, um, and uh, currently we have about uh, 700 users and uh, we, are, um, uh, we want to go forward and uh, make more updates, for example, uh, make co-authors category. <laughs> yes, and uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Natalia, and we can move on to the questions. Uh, hey, it seems that uh, you have uh, done quite a lot already, so uh, uh, why, are you, why are you here? What do you uh, need additionally to, uh, uh, to improve your work? Uh, additionally, well, uh, uh, on the technical side or uh, about my idea? Ah, okay. So, um, <clears throat> about um, you know, my idea, I worked on pitching a little and uh, also uh, I uh, got tagasisida. Feedback. F feedback from uh, mentors which and other people who didn't uh, try my app uh, before and I thought that uh, first reaction w w uh, is uh, very, very important. So the idea is that I put my idea up on your platform and I can sell my idea. Uh, yes, if you want, you can sell it also. So um, I'm having a hard time to understand that how it works because if I put my idea up there and someone reads it, then they already have the idea and why should they pay me? Uh, uh, excuse me, can you repeat again? So if I put my idea up there and if I want to sell it, then I have to introduce the idea. Uh, uh, there's uh, 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 two options, uh, excuse me. Uh, so uh, the main uh, description, uh, which is free, and the uh, longer description, which you can uh, uh, request some money for, for example. Okay, carrying on then. So how do you compare the platforms, the two platforms I'm going to give you, uh, the first ones are social media where ideas are always shared and if you go to Reddit, there's, everything is in Reddit already available. And the other platforms are like Kickstarter and so on where you also introduce an idea and people pay you money to buy that thing you're uh, proposing. So how do you compare to those platforms? Oh, well, my application stands uh, specifically for that and uh, specifically for sharing ideas. For, for, for example, uh, Reddit is like... Uh, j just a, like a, con a conversational uh, a platform, uh, and <clears throat> yeah, I forgot. Oh my God! Uh, so um, uh, uh, my, in my application, there are a lot of uh, options which uh, uh, other uh, applications don't have, and uh, we uh, also uh, have t uh, tender uh, there uh, or uh, auctions. You can, for example, you for example, you can't, can't make auctions on Reddit. Super! Thank you very much, Isis, for the pitch. And last but not least, for sure, we are one step before the end to conclude our pitching session. I would like to invite and stage the team Shift Lab. Please, the stage is yours. Yay. This one? Uh, green goes further. I hope the battery will stay for the last pitch. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. 
I'm Ping, and I'm the team lead for SIFLab. Uh, what SIFLab is, is a platform that helps students find research opportunities and then help the researchers find perfect candidates for their labs. Um, so my stepdad, he's a, a researcher, and I've seen firsthand how difficult it is for him to sometimes find uh, research students in the current system. Uh, him and his colleagues, actually, um, because right now what they have is each researcher has a profile page on the university website, and they have very little control on who, when, or how these pages are viewed. So an example would be he would win a, a research grant, um, and then he would be like, oh, great, I can get students to come and work for me, but he can't promote himself in that particular, um, in, in the current workspace. So he's lacking flexibility, um, and it's, yeah, becoming quite difficult for researchers to find these um, researching students. But this is only one side of the problem. The other side of the problem, actually, is as a student, um, it's quite difficult to find labs in itself because every university has its own uh, page where you can look at the profiles, but you have to go through all of these different university pages in order to find the relevant information that you may need. So that's why we've created SIFLab, where we curate all of the information from across the universities into one database for students where they can search through uh, keywords and location, and then they will be displayed with a list of professors that, that, that may be interested to, in them. Um, we can display any uh, information that we want that we think is important for people to uh, see. Uh, we have a quick demo that we finished an hour ago. Uh, if we can play that, that would be great. If they will, just give them a second. Oh. So we very kindly used um, our mentors' connections from uh, DreamApply to build this on top of their platform. So we are really excited to start testing this. Right now you can see we can search by um, research uh, area and then also by location as well. Ideally in the future we'll be able to separate these into two different components. So you can search by location and, um, and research interest area. Um, so to wrap up, I mean, why are we doing this? We think that research is important. We, we want to encourage people to research on the lower the barrier so people can get into research easier. And we also want to increase the productivity of the researchers. So instead of having to worry about hiring people, they can use our tool to, uh, to, to do so. Uh, my name is Ping, and I'm here with my awesome team of seven who have experience in uh, analytics, engineering, and uh, business. And yeah, that is SIFLab. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let's move to the questions. I can always ask questions. Um, <laughs> what is, is the global potential market for, for this product? Yeah, so I mean, right now we, we're, we're estimating in the developed countries, so Europe, US, uh, UK, Australia, um, there's maybe 300,000 PhD candidates per year, and there may be about the same number of research labs. So if we quantify this as a, a yearly subscription for these labs or have some sort of um, boost system where you, if you really desperately need someone, you can pay to get your profile up the top, I think that that's uh, kind of the revenue streams we're looking at. And depending on our pricing, I think it's multiples of 300,000. Um, yeah. It seems like a simple enough idea. Why hasn't it been done before? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, okay, I, I, we talked about this yesterday, um, and I've, I've been thinking about it, I think with the current competitors, which are mm, not so widespread, they focus on research projects as, as the basis of the search. Um, and for universities or research labs, updating projects as you get funding is more challenging than if you just had the profile online the whole time. So I think they have more user-generated content. They post themselves. We are here. We input all of the professors or the researchers onto our website and then and have them listed anyways. So we, we, we require the minimum amount of effort from the research labs themselves in order to operate this tool. Excellent. Thank you very much, Tim Simla. No worries. Please give them a big applause.
And with that pitch, we are actually concluding all the pitching session. And I would like to invite you to give a big applause for yourself, for your team, and for all the people and all the stuff that you have been doing these three days. Woohoo! Yes. Yeah, I, I wish that everybody like from Zoom could see what is happening, uh, from the stream, what is happening in the room, which is uh, very positive. Uh, without further ado, uh, people online, you're going on a break for 20 minutes. People here, like we will come back at 5.40, yes. Uh, you can take a break, uh, get yourself relaxed, because before we go to uh, the award ceremony, as our jury is deliberating the final results and uh, prizes. Yeah, et uh, siis koguname 17.40 ja oodatavalt kell 6 algab juba tordisöömine ja kultuuriprogramm aatriumis. Nii et natuke kannatust süri läheb nüüd tööle. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>
you're up. So we want the best. They have been doing so great. Oh, we can do this joke if you want. Kas uh, mida küttelda? Yeah, uh, and uh, before it starts, uh, Mark uh, will uh, say a few words uh, about the principles of the election. Uh, uh, yeah, Mark will say it only in English. No. Yes. Great, so uh, I need my mic on. Great, so welcome back. Uh, we promised 20 minutes, we came back half an hour later. As I said, this is my Greek time. The previous days we finished on time, so sorry about that. Because the selection process uh, was tough and there have been very difficult discussions behind closed doors. And um, maybe you want to translate, Janika? Yeah, et me olime üli optimistlikud, et me saame 20 minutiga valitud aga tei kujuta ette, mis seal uste taga toimus, aga lõpuks võitsid reeglid, mis oli enne pitsimist, enne kergituskõnesid ja lihtikõnesid kokku lepitud. Nii. So now we have results. Uh, we have agreed who will be the winners of the awards. As we can see, all the mentors and the experts and the jury uh, is waiting with very exciting uh, prizes there. But before we start announcing, I would like to invite on stage Mart Aro, who will talk about the selection criteria and the whole process. Yeah, yeah. Mart Raigi, Mrs. Tapselt, seal ruumis toimus, miks meil kauem aega läks. Palun, Mart. Hey everyone, Bria, I mean, it's uh, insane how much work you created to the jury members. Congratulations to all of you for doing such an amazing work here during the weekend. And I, I really want to stress out that if you are not going to get any award, we are still all winners. Thanks to this weekend and, and uh, thanks to the amazing work that Tallinn University has done with uh, their crazy team to take this on board. Big hands to Tallinn University. And from the jury side, I would really like to thank all the partners and, um, and uh, the mentors as well. Uh, I think without you, uh, it would have been impossible to have this kind of uh, uh, an amazing event. And uh, really big thank you for the jury members as well. It was pretty heavy workload that you all, all took, took on you. So uh, thank you very much from my side. And uh, let's head into the game. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, uh, it works great. Uh, so we will start firstly with uh, special prizes, the non-monetary prizes. And I would like to call on stage uh, Tia Un, Ja Christophe, oh my God, I, Christophe. Finish. Yes. Uh, let's let's start with startup Estonia. We have just another, oh, you I'm know. So sorry. Okay. No, already. already <laughs> yeah. 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 Stay here. Yes, stay you here. Can come. Yeah. <laughs> you want to say, but we don't see you so well. Ja kui aus olla, et siis seal on ka taltehi slide, et need auhinat tulevad koos. Okay. Nii. Yes. So we have. Uh, you need. Will you, do you want to say some words? If you have any free hands. Well, it was really, really impressive. And uh, I think uh, these prizes goes to a team which worked very hard and very thoroughly and uh, really brought special moments uh, to us. So should I announce, uh, Katarina? Yes. Or you announce? You announce. OK, so the award goes to my zone team. Please come on stage. Yes. Congratulations. We have the pictures already. Great. We have more of these. <laughs> we needed multiple hands to do this uh, <laughs> handover of the awards. So who is the next team who has won? So I think uh, it's Inu team. Inu, are you here? 
Okay, wonderful. Very well deserved from Taltec and uh, Tilia. Wonderful. Congratulations. And maybe you can see where is the light, so we can see your faces. Is with the photographer okay, or should we move them a little bit? Can you move? Right now you have a slide. Okay. Oh, uh -huh. We want the light on your face, not the slide on your face. <laughs> Super! Congratulations. Bye, Lorna. Bye, Lorna. And then we can move to the next award that is from Startup Estonia. So, Ingo, please come on stage and give the special prize. Yes, thank you, thank you very much uh, to all of you, uh, to all of your ideas, your, your work, what you have done, your progress, what you did. And I really, really hope that you will continue after this hackathon. We really want to see you on next year hackathons and on the different events what happens around the, in, Est in Estonia related for startups and uh, all, the, all, all education as well and so um, I do not have the physical, physical award but I do have two awards to two teams and uh, those awards are free access to Startup Day Festival on May, in the end of May which happens on 24th uh, until 26th of May, May January, guys, January, already in two, weeks, two months. Anyway, our award from Startup Estonia goes to uh, free tickets to Startup Day Festival to Coit. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys that you are solving a very important uh, problem and you are helping uh, to tech, tech companies because they need good developers. And our second, um, I decided that we need to help foreigners. We need to help the people who live in Estonia and struggling with Estonian language. And, uh, and the, its very important role is technology, which might be help them to study Estonian language. So, Westlur, free tickets for you. <laughs> I think you have two tasks. One is the picture. Let's make a quick photo. Thanks. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. So as we gave our special awards and congratulations to the teams, and now we will start giving the money. Money makes the world go round and your innovation as well. So we will have uh, several um, monetary prizes and we have also some celebrities, as I would call them, for this session because without them and without their support to make this event happen, they you wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be here, nobody would be here. So I would like first three people that will stay on stage the whole time, uh, Tia and Marta, Aro and, and Tinka Oba, to be all the time yeah. here. Please. Yeah. 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 Yes, we have to show you to the world. We have to show to the world who are the people, the key people who make education uh, Tallinn University, in Estonia. Estonia and Startup Estonia. Imagine the Holy three people here. Okay. <laughs> the three main pillars of education in Estonia, I would say. Pillars. Pillars. Killers. Ah. <laughs> and then for the first monetary prize, uh, that is an award by Tallinn Education Office, I need just technology to work with me. Thank you so much. Is uh, Martaro is coming? No, no. No, no. That yes, Martaro, of course. Martaro, please. <laughs> You can see that uh, it's it's quite the uh, quite the hassle with this uh, crazy amount of different awards that are given out at the moment, but um, yeah, I'm I'm uh, as one of my uh, tasks, I'm also in the board of the organization called Etec Estonia, and Etec Estonia is an association of education innovation or education technology companies. So 
Um, if you are getting ready, don't hesitate to look up uh, what EdTech Estonia is doing. For example, on, um, quite soon now there is the birthday of EdTech Estonia on 24th. So if you are interested, come and join and uh, sign up there. And you can make friends with all of the education innovators and uh, learn from them. So I think it's a great opportunity to make sure that you're going to be successful with your innovation here. But yes, um, uh, from Tallinn City, we have um, ATEC Estonia Hack Award. And uh, this is 500 euros. And it goes to a team that is developing AI tools for teachers. And as you know, there was quite a few of uh, this kind of teams here. <laughs> So it was very, uh, very interesting to see that the jury uh, managed to agree on a team that, whose name is AI Tools for Teachers in Estonia. Please come on stage. I don't, maybe I wouldn't know. Great, thank you so much. The three main pillars, dealers or killers, I don't know, you can choose whatever you like, will stay on stage. And I would like to invite the next uh, jury member or next sponsor who will actually give the, the award, Olavi Ottepalo from International uh, School of Tallinn. Please come on stage. You can choose. All the microphones here. <laughs> So the price of uh, 500 euros um, from International School of uh, Tallinn goes to a, a team that already has proven a long-term commitment to uh, digital business development and currently develops a practical tool how to teach uh, uh, the programming languages in the schools in a more engaging way. The winner is quite. Congratulations. No? Yes. Not to the slide, but to the light. Tulge, tulge, tulge. Tulge, tulge. We don't bite usually. Vega, vega. Vega. Three pillars. Kolm, kolm samast ka. Kolm samast. Excellent, congratulations. Thank you so much. Then we are moving to the next uh, monetary award. Put it also in the slide so then I know that we don't make any other mistake. <laughs> Perfect. So the, the next award is given by Practical, and I would like to give the stage to Omar Eloit to give this award. Please come on stage. Yeah, Järgmine Auint is Firmal Practical, ja Omar Palon. Thank you, everybody. I'm joining Merit in the appreciation of the work you've done here so far. And I hope at least some teams continue after this hack. And in, I have this award for a special team, I found out. But everybody who continues, feel free to reach out to me or any of the other mentors to get some advice afterwards also. But this award goes to a team that um, actually changed my mind of this award. I was giving it to another team, but then I saw what they do, and it instantly clicked with me. And I appreciate the work they did in this hack on a physical product, and I know how hard it's, it is to do physical products. And they have a projector, they have a mirror, and they do something really cool. So team Chimera, please come here. Here's a special award for you. Congratulations. Pailonna.
One second. Just kui ma alustasime rahalist auhindadega enam fotograaf. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Those who are watching live and wondering what is happening is like one camera broke down for the pictures that we make, but live events have also that. Okay, so we are here, we'll try to adapt. Siin on, on olemas ütlused, ära kunagi loota tehnoloogia peale. Yes, Isegi don't rely hacking. on technology, right? <laughs> it's a tool, right? So we can catch the moment with other ways as well. Good, and then we can move to the next uh, monetary award. Give me the slide up so I don't uh, get something wrong. So the next award is given by Lyant, and I would like to give on stage Annette Marie Paumets to give this award and say a few words. Please welcome on stage. Lyant uh, Dauhin. Thank you, but I feel like this award goes to one group who will appreciate that I will do this introduction in Estonian. Ma tõesti ei tunne, et ma saan seda uinda ingliskeeles tutvustada, sest see läheb ühele väga, väga toredale grupile, kes teevad asju kogukonnast kogukonnale ja me tunneme laajend programmis, et see on väga oluline, et õpetajad toetavad õpetajaid, nii et palun, õppi vaim! Congratulations! Mingi, mingi. Sambat kohle. Woohoo, we got the camera back. Let's let's make the all the smiles shine. Excellent. Woohoo. Paliana. We move forward to give more money to innovation. Maybe that's why the cameras start working again. <laughs> so I would like to invite on stage Lee Hubert to give the award by Ule Mr. City. Yeah, Ule Mr. City, at Kaapuraha Sayuga. Hello, as I mentioned, it's, as it mentioned already, I'm representing Ule Mr. City, one of a kind smart city in all Baltics. Smart city that is developed based on data and science. And together with scientists, researchers and data specialists from different universities. And we would like to continue it. And accordingly, oh, this special award goes to Shift Lab to find new researchers and scientists. Squeeze all together to the lights. Excellent. Congratulations. Before we get to the top six teams, at uh, one top team per category, uh, I would like to invite on stage Kadri Masik, that she's going to give the award by Estonian Ministry of Education and Research. Please, the stage is yours. Yeah, yeah, lavale, nüüd tuleb Haridus ja Teadus Ministeriumi auhin. Palun. Thanks a lot. Um, as a representative of uh, ETEC Estonia, and also a former member of the Minister of Education and Research. It's a great pleasure to, to be here today and, and hand over the awards of the Ministry. Who Education Estonia is, uh, our head of board, Mertaro, already mentioned, but we are also a strategic partner to the Ministry. 
And as a sign of um, importance of uh, public-private partnership uh, in achieving education policy goals, the ministry has uh, asked us uh, to, to hand over the awards um, uh, to you here today. Uh, we also looked at uh, the um, uh, criteria that were evaluated here today, but also education policy goals. And in general, I must say it was uh, so uh, uh, great to see uh, so, many, uh, so many projects linking to, to these, and especially in the field of um, uh, learning Estonian language. But uh, this time, our um, uh, second prize award uh, goes to worshipping the autonomy of education uh, institutions and the importance of uh, school management. So, Clark, please. Uh, and the awards are produced by future users of all your applications. <laughs> Please come to the light. Uh -huh. Not to the slide. <laughs> Squeeze more. It depends on the occasion. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, and now, uh, yes, go. Yes. And one more prize. Oh, yes. oh, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, the first prize uh, goes to Coit. the stage because I may be very excited to to hear the top six so I'm running 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 to this time so the jury has worked very hard uh, they had very intense discussions and they have uh, chosen the top six teams for today's hackathon today's the last three days hackathon but these awards they are very special because they're coming from Tallinn University the place that has uh, hosted all this event and the person behind all this event Yannicka who is the, the head of STEAM for Edu Cluster and supports innovation not only by creating these events but also by giving these amazing awards <laughs> Kuus Tallinna Ülikooli auhinda uh, Steam for Edu, ehk uh, Matic Innovatsiooni klastri poolt. Ja me oleme palunud neid auhindu üleanma kuus jüri liiget. Ja mina olin täiesti neutraalne. Mina viisin lihtsalt tulemusi sisse. <laughs> Palun. Yeah. That's true. What I meant by that is like your contribution to, to actually have these awards. Yes, Yannicka was totally neutral and totally objective, just facilitating the process and didn't have any favors, favorites, right? That's what you were talking about, right? You are, and I can't say you are learning so quickly. You just know Estonia ah, so okay. well. Aita. So how That's it's going to work is that we're going to call all the six jury members on stage and each one of you is going to present one of the teams. So you will all have six pictures, basically. Please accept the, and um, invite, uh, welcome, not invite, welcome the jury members. So thank you very much and thank you for all the hard work you have done for the past 48 hours. Um, our work was indeed very, very difficult. Um, but we have decided on uh, six uh, teams that we want to call out. And the first one that I'm going to call out is, uh, is a team that already has a big social impact. 
So I'm very happy to, to, to announce that the first award goes to Digi Abi. And uh, the second award is going to uh, Hack, what is Can helping we wait a bit for a picture and get for the, award? the students find their job. The award goes to Edmap. And the third award is going to a very simple and very effective uh, solution. So, Kaimar, please come here again. They are online. They are online. They are online. They are online. I'm very glad to. Uh... Can we make a pose so that we can give the award and make the picture? And for Edmap, they are online, so congratulations to them. But we cannot. Uh, they cannot attend here physical. Um, yes. Uh, I'm glad. To give... <laughs> can I? <laughs> yeah. Give them one second to make the picture, yeah. and then you can introduce it. One minute. Okay. One second. Perfect. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad to give uh, my little piece of uh, award uh, to a team um, which I'm really looking forward to start collaboration with as soon as possible. So, uh, team Estonia and uh, Odyssey, please, this one is for you. them a little bit more applause as they go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we have been specialists all of the stage and how to make great pictures, right? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. The next award goes to a team that's already stuck in my memory, and I hope they will help to drain loads and loads of people's memories. So, Team Transful, please come here. And finally, additional award. One of the well-known Estonian writers, Johan Liev, has said, a person who doesn't remember the past will live without the future. What would be better and the best to continue our future? To continue the future of Estonia and Baltic countries to introduce our future to our visitors. So, the vote goes to stories about politics. Mona Lugo. Congratulations. Congratulations to all the teams and all the great work you have been doing. And uh, you have been working for three days to present our great results, but this 20 very intense minutes, I think it's also uh, equivalent uh, to that. So I would like to invite all the, the jury members on stage because we have some little gifts for you as well. Please, yeah.
And I think in this event, something that we learned is that we don't have enough hands. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, uh, one more. We need one more. And I can say also once more the name as we do this silent ceremony here. So, special thanks to Omari Lloyd, Anne Lind Lieberg, Annette Marie Paumets, Annika Kungas, Arvi Tavast, Urmas Heinaste, Lee Hube, and Martaro. Thank you so much for your work and your contribution to make this event happen. Aga te kirjutu pilt ära. Mul on väga tähtis teada anda. Can I have the mic back? No. You can't have your mic back right now. I took over. Okay, great. Sorry for that. No worries. Thank you. Okay, and now I have extremely, extremely important announcement that this event wouldn't be possible with our wonderful, full of energy moderator, Katerina. Big applause for her. Bye, Luna Katerina. Thank you so much. I was like, why I cannot have my microphone back? What happened? So before I, thank you so much, Janneke. And without, this, without you, this couldn't happen. And without your translation, it couldn't happen. It has been a pleasure sharing the stage. I'm very proud of you. You didn't have to do it with me. No, I'm sure we can do it with you a little bit. It was our first trial, and it did really well. Yeah, I think this is a start for very nice things in uh, Estonglish in the future. But before I call you all back on stage, I would like to um, thank you very much for being here, and thank you everybody who is watching that. Unfortunately, you cannot be here to cut this amazing cake and have the possibility to uh, be part of our cultural um, after-program event with the Ukrainian folk uh, dancers and singers. So from our side, have a good night, and thank you very much for being part of EDEC Hack Estonia, and uh, see you next year. Ja siis ootab meid tort ja kult ja tants. So the goal is, yes, come all down and let's...